Alabama Baptist University campus at Shawnee for week eight of the Great American Conference season. And tonight, the two top dogs in the Sooner State at the Division II level in the Great American Conference square off as 6-1 and one, Southeastern Oklahoma State will visit 4-3 and three, Oklahoma Baptist. Hello again, everyone. I'm Todd Miller along with John Brooks, Scott Wallace, John Zonlow, our entire network crew. Glad to have you along, border to border in the state of Oklahoma for our coverage here tonight of the Savage Storm and the Bison. Oklahoma Baptist trails the all-time series three games to two against Southeastern. Many of these games have been decided by fewer than seven points, including a three-point OBU win down in Durant two seasons ago, 34-31, as part of a one-and-ten campaign for Southeastern. We'll be back to set the stage. We'll also hear this week from Chris Jensen and Keelan Harris in our Bison Player Spotlight as our pregame show brought to you by Noble McIntyre and Company. Get underway next on the Bison Radio Network. Evening in late October here on the Oklahoma Baptist campus with Rayleigh Chapel shining bright in the background off to the east side of the stadium. We're ready for homecoming football tonight. And indeed, it is a homecoming for over years. The Bison have been on the road for the last two weeks, splitting trips to Russellville and last week to Ada. Tonight, Brooksy, they will put a 14-game win streak against in-state Oklahoma opponents on the line. And this might be the stiffest and sternest test that they will have faced in those 14 games as a very, very surprising event very good southeastern team at six and one rides into Shawnee. I don't even know why you why you asked me to be on the air. You've already said everything I was gonna say. You're pretty cool. That was the first that was the second thing I was gonna say. The first thing was about the reference to the weather. Now I don't think in August the wind would have been blowing out of the south at what looks like to be at least 20 miles an hour. The wind uh, is really whipping that big flag out there at the north end of the stadium. But uh, probably wouldn't have that wind but I'm gonna tell you this we would have had a temperature like this in August, maybe a little bit warmer. What an evening for a homecoming game in October and to have August weather. You couldn't ask for much more. I kidded with Athletic Director Robert Davenport and said he had some magic when it came to this. As far as the other thing you said, no question. Of the 14-game win streak, this will be the toughest. If they extend it to 15, this one will be notched most likely as the toughest in that streak. Southeastern has really, really been a surprise. They set it 6-1. and one. The other three schools they were tied with, they've all won. We'll give you scores later. Harding, Henderson State, Washita have all won today. They're all sitting at 7-1. Southeastern trying to stay among the boys in Arkansas at the same record. And obviously for OBU, I you'd like to say, can they win three of the next four and maybe get some kind of a postseason bid to a, to a, a bowl game? Maybe, but reality, I think, is, uh, Todd, we got to be honest with everybody. This has to be the start of a four-game winning streak down the stretch. And I think we can agree, Brooksy, if we see what we saw last week down today against East Central, they can win out. I mean, that was a... That passion? A, yes, that passion, that heart, as they really were a complete football team on both sides of the ball. Well, I think you said it best. They were a complete team, and... You know, even in the other wins, I mean, that was the fourth win of the season. In the other three wins, you could argue that they were not a complete team in any of those three wins. They were a complete team last week. If it continues, they got a good shot against a good Southeastern State team. Expecting a large crowd here at Crane Family Stadium with the Hurt Athletic Complex as the cheerleading and palm squad along with the Bayern brigade making their way in on the track just off to our right the winds we told you south at 21 miles per hour gusts upwards towards 25 it's a warm early evening here in Pottawatomie County temperature probably not that much of a factor the wind a big factor for two teams that like to throw it around the yard Preston here of course one of the top rated quarterbacks in all of America he spearheads the league's best passing game per yardage at 305 close behind southeastern the savage storm averaging 262.4 yards per ball game ranking third behind OBU and Henderson State in the Great American Conference four more on the weather conditions let's slide down to the field 
for our, with our own horse jockey, Bill Shoemaker. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, excuse me, it's Scott Warnish. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot. But uh, you guys are correct. This is a wind game blowing briskly out of the south. The passing and kicking game will be affected greatly. Uh, I agree with what you guys were saying. It was the best game that Oklahoma Baptist has played all year, but I disagree about them being complete because there were still two big kickoff returns that kept East Central in the game, and then a punt that rolled off one of the OBU players, and they turned that ball over. I think if Oklahoma Baptist can get that special teams going correctly, that's when they have the complete game. Scott, I think with the conditions as they are, if they do, down at some point during the course of this evening game it's going to favor the team that can best run the football right now statistically coming into week eight that would be the savage storm they average just under 176 yards per game on the ground fifth of the great american conference oklahoma baptist has been good against the run second overall in the league but the bison running the football are eighth just 146 plus yards per contest well last last week tyler stever really got it going and i think a lot of it had to do with improved play calling a lot of passing on first down where the defense of East Central could not just lay there, lay back on Stever and play the run. You mix it up like that, I think Stever is going to get loose today. I got to say this before we go any further. We're very, very fortunate yeah. to have our buddy Scott Wanish with us. We're calling him the Cowboy. He came very close to leaving the planet this week with a terrible horse uh, accident on a ranch in Missouri. He's lucky to be here with us. We're very, very thankful to the man upstairs and everybody else. Well said, Brooksy. Keep Scott in your prayers as he continues to mend. I'll tell you, he said all along he was coming to the basketball game last night, and he got there late. But, man, when he walked in, I just had to give him a big hug because it has been, uh, it's been a tough week. And, Scott, we love you, and we're glad you're with us. Thanks so much for the support, guys. Love you, too. All right. We'll have more on our pregame show. Up next is our visit with head coach Chris Jensen, the eighth skipper of Bison football. That is next on the OBU Radio Network. It was fun to them get to celebrate again. Sometimes I think as a coach, you probably feel like your message from time to time falls on deaf ears. Well, I can assure you, you're 
constant harping last week about having to play with passion I thought was a real key in that ball game because as I told you before we came on you could see those guys enjoy cheering for each other on the sidelines yeah and that's you know one of the things that I just really felt last week is I, I knew that they loved playing the game because I've seen it I've seen that kind of passion and excitement and effort in practice um, but for three weeks or at least two weeks we hadn't seen it on the sideline on Saturdays and, and that's what puzzled me and so Challenged them to bring that kind of effort and enthusiasm to the game, and they did that. Preston here would become so accustomed to seeing four, five, six touchdown pass games. Not even named the conference player of the week offensively after he, again, tied a school record with six touchdown tosses. The guy is just amazing at the numbers he's putting up. He is, um, you know, and he's got the respect of, of everybody in our conference. Um, hopefully he'll, he'll garner some national respect as well with the performance that he puts up. I'm sure he'd be the first to give credit to the offensive line and the guys around him, the wide receivers catching those balls. And, you know, Cornell had four four receptions and was recognized as as offensive player of the week for the conference. And so, you know, we, we are just so happy he's on our side. I thought the win last week came in the trenches. Do you agree both on your offensive front and with your defensive front? You not only got home, but finished making plays against Kenny Hearns here. Yeah, um, that was critical. Um, being able to run the ball as effectively as we did, because um, they they had they're they're good running the ball and they're good passing the ball. They're really balanced offensively. Um, you know the fact that we were able to d defend the pass so well. Um, they had fewer passing yards than rushing yards, and we still outrushed them. Um, I think that was the key, and, and a lot of that had to do with the guys up front, uh, front seven on defense, and then obviously the offensive line on offense. I have been on record as saying I thought your defensive effort against Harding three weeks ago, probably as good as you've had since I've been with the program. You said all things considered last week against East Central because of their ability to hurt you through the air with a passing game. You were as impressed with that performance as any. I was because East Central is so balanced. When you go in defending Harding, you might get a, a pass one or two, maybe three times. You just have to hold up to those. Um, but with East Central, they're so balanced throwing the ball and running the ball. And, you know, their quarterback was so so good throwing the ball um, and, and as well as running. And so, you know, it was a lot harder to defend their offense um, collectively uh, from the front end to the back end. And so, you know, I, I did think it was a great performance by our defense. Okay, we've talked about this before. We'll talk about it again. Um, special teams. I know that you guys continue to work on that every day in practice. But... From a head coaching standpoint, how frustrating it is it to continually give up the field position on kickoff returns? You know, that, that is something that has to be corrected. Um, you know, we really, until the other night, hadn't had, an, you know, our, our kickers were able to put it in the end zone uh, quite a bit, and the other night we weren't able to do that, so they were returning uh, a number of, of the kicks. And, you know, we, we did good on a couple of them, and, and then, you know, the very first kickoff, they try to run a reverse, and we, we get them inside the 10, and then we also stop them inside the 25 another time, but then they, they have, like, three or four of them that they start on the 40-yard line, and those are the ones that, you know, as, as we get down the stretch here and we're playing some really good teams, um, we can't give them starting field position on, on our 40. One up, one down, Coach, as far as this difficult stretch began last week. Now it's step two, and you have – the surprise, but also I think one of the more talented teams of the conference in town tonight. They are, um, you know, I'm checking their roster based on 2019. They don't have a whole lot of new faces. They're just a lot of guys that that are playing a lot better. Um, they did make some changes up front on the offensive line, and their coach has done a phenomenal job. Um, but offensively, they're they're effective. They do a good job with on offense, and they have team speed on defense, and so they are one of the better teams. Southeastern has played solid on offense. Defensively, though, that's really where they've got everybody's attention of the league. Do you agree? I think so, uh, just because they play so fast and, and they play with great effort, relentless effort. And so, you know, it's you, you got to make sure that you are making every catch. You can't let the ball hit your hands and not make the play. Um, you gotta, you, you got to step with the, the proper foot um, as an offensive lineman when you're blocking those guys. Um, you got to keep your feet moving. You know, they, they – they have enough speed that you have to you have to be at the top of your game. Football is a game of emotions. That's what you preached last week. That's what, as we alluded to earlier, was a key in your win at East Central. Southeastern maybe plays with as much emotion as anybody in the conference. You have to kind of weather that emotional storm for the kickoff. Yeah, they come out and I mean, obviously, 
when you watch every every game that they play, they come out and they are they're frenzied. Um, they they do fly around. Um, when, if you can weather the storm and get get to the third fourth series without doing anything really dumb and making any big mistakes, then then they kind of settle down a little bit. They still play they still play great defense and they still fly around, but um, they just they're at a different level when the game first starts. All right, when you look at this matchup, what do we have to do to get the victory? We have to make the plays. Um, you know, the, the big emphasis this week has been um, catching every ball. If the ball hits you in the hands, you got to catch it, whether you're offense, defense, um, linebackers, um, secondary, running backs, tight ends. We've got to make those plays as the game inches, and we can't look back and say, you know, if we'd only made that catch or, you know, if we'd only made that block, if he'd have stepped, you know, one inch more to the right, um, he would have made the block instead of missing the block. Um, as far as containing the quarterback, you know, you have to be on your rush lane and contain him. Um, he's really good at avoiding rush. Um, he's not looking to run. He's looking to throw the ball down the field, and so you have to keep him in the pocket, contain him, and get some pressure on him. Vice head football coach Chris Jensen, a couple of notes. We were talking about the improvement for Southeastern defensively. The numbers for the Savage Storm, they are third of the conference in total defense, fifth against the run, and second against the pass, allowing less than 170 yards per ball game. Also up front, an offensive line that averages nearly 300 pounds tackle to tackle. Arguably the strongest point of this offensive unit, at least contributing the most to their turnaround from a 1-10 season a year ago. Coming up next, it's our weekly Bison Player Spotlight. We'll hear from one of the nation's best wide receivers. Keelan Harris, the sophomore from Richardson, Texas, is up next after these local messages on the Bison Radio Network. Christy now with Keelan Harris, the sophomore wide receiver on our Bison Player Spotlight. Key, what a year you've had so far, and uh, you said a lot of it has just been the difference from 2019 to 2021 of the way you go about your pregame routines. Uh, yes, sir. So over the seasons and over the summer, I just was, you know, studying more films, studying more defenses to get more open on the field. And Josh Cornell really helped me, um, you know, level up my game with that. You and Josh have quite a, a broship, don't you? I mean, you, both on the field and off the field. Some people might think you're you're competitive. I guess you are during the game, but the ultimate goal is the same for both of you. Uh, yes, sir. So he teaches me. He teaches me a lot. But we're in competition just to level up our game. Like it's not. It's nothing like a hatred. But we're just trying to make each other better. So whenever we're on the field, on the side of each other, we compete with each other. You know, to see who can do the best. But it's always brotherly love. 
One of the things you've always been since I've known you is you're confident, but that's not to the detriment of you. Use that for your success. There's a fine line between being confident and being arrogant, isn't there? Yeah, yes, sir. It's a big difference. Being confident is just knowing you can go out on that field and do whatever you're capable of, and then being cocky is just, you know, just saying whatever you can do, you know, down in other people. But being confident is definitely my trait. I just, whenever I'm confident on the field, I think I play better. I have a couple of young guys in Clark and Marshall that have uh, kind of aided the re receiving core too. You guys right now are starting to hit your stride and, and are a very, very deep unit. Yes, sir. Well, with Julian and um, Mars, you guys, they're they're same grade as me, but they're you know they play they didn't play when I played, so they're just not learning and they're they're getting better. So I'm happy to play on the field with them as well. And next year, hopefully, we get better and have the same type of season. One of the things that people talked about last week was maybe the passion wasn't there on the game field that was in practice. I thought you guys came out last week uh, playing with a renewed sense of passion. Yes, sir. So our coaches just, you know, they strived us to do better during practice on and off the field. They pushed us to be better, like sprinting on and off the field. So I think when we have more detail in the little things and we're excited about playing, I think we do good on Saturdays, same as the sideline. Do you feel like this offense, and I know this is game eight of the season, still has a lot that hasn't been untapped or unlocked yet? Oh, most definitely. I feel like we. I feel like we haven't really unlocked what we, you know, what we're capable of. You know, we we do the simple things, but we do it to the to the great core. So. I think, yeah, for sure, I think we have, we don't, we haven't unlocked a couple of things. Okay, I want to ask you about your off-season workout. Um, down around Dallas-Fort Worth, you're involved in a program, and you, you work out with a lot of bigger name guys, Des Bryant being one of those. Tell, tell us about that training program and how much it's helped you from a very young age. Well, in my opinion, I it helped me from a very young age since I was a sophomore because I've always wanted to be one of those big name guys and me working out with them, it just strives me to be better than them. So I've always outworked those big name guys. So it just, you know, shines on the field. Had an 87 yard kickoff return earlier this year. How much fun is it uh, being involved in kickoff returns for this team? I've always, I've always wanted to be on kick returns. So being the first one to take a kick return kick return back for a long time in this program is a blessing so hopefully I get to take a couple more back before the season ends. All right Southeastern in town give us a scouting report on the Savage Storm defense. They're quick and they've been very very good this year. They're a very good football team we just have to come out and it comes down to the you know the roots of who wants it more so we come out there and compete and with no turnovers and we do our thing I think we can come out and beat them. Keelon Harris, the six foot, 180 pound junior wide receiver from Richardson, Texas. He is in pursuit of 1,000 yards in a single season, joining his teammate Josh Cordell, who accomplished that back in 2019. Entering week eight this season, Key needs just 238 receiving yards to join Josh Cordell of 2019. Also, in his career, he has 82 receptions, already over 1,500 yards and 12 touchdowns. He is the fastest player in Bison football history, too. Double digits in touchdowns. More pregame coming up as the captains are making their way towards midfield. It's Oklahoma Baptist and Southeastern and homecoming football tonight right here on the OBU Football Radio Network.
At the end of the spring semester, the team voted for the player of the season. The last election was built core values. The vote was based on the Florida's commitment to live out the core values in all areas of his life, as well as his willingness to encourage his teammates to do the same. Well, again, a player selected was awarded the action to wear the number zero of the season. He's joined the Bison football team and congratulated the team. Now they are. Let's just take a look at the action because this is the last action of the day in the Great American Conference. Everything else was earlier this afternoon, starting with Washington, Bowling Roy, Southern Arkansas in the first game, 42 to 7. In the 2 o'clock game, it was a thriller, and the top of the standings almost got shuffled because Henderson State had to go double overtime at Arkansas Tech to win 41 to 38. East Central at Southwestern, East Central a winner, 44 to 34. Northwestern got its first win of the year. Uh, I'm right on that, aren't I? Uh, you, you, I think I'm right. Southern Nazarene at Northwestern, yes. Northwestern got its first win of the year. They're one and seven. Southern Nazarene now one and seven. Arkansas Monticello at Harding, and that's 51 to seven. Uh, Harding uh, late in the fourth quarter, so that one's in the bag. So the standings look this way. Harding, Henderson State, and Washington uh, tied at 7-1. Southeastern a half a game back at 6-1. East Central at 5-3. Arkansas Monticello at 4-3, along with Oklahoma Baptist. Excuse me, Arkansas Monticello at 4-4. Four four. Southern Arkansas 3-5. Arkansas Tech 2-6. Southern Nazarene 1-7. Northwestern 1-7. Southwestern 0-7. Kickoff coming up after this two-minute local timeout. OB1 deferred, we'll have the winners first quarter. Well, well that, that the wind's bad, we're seeing that crowd like. I'm gonna turn it down one. Yeah, do whatever it is. I screwed that up, sorry about that. Southern Nazarene. That was in the fourth quarter, but. Oh, yeah. they were, okay, I got it. Anyway, you got the first one. I'll get you an update if I can real quick. What? I'll get you a the final. Forty-seven twenty-seven late fourth. So got it. Come on, guys. Hold it. And Monticello is it. Or Harding, is that, is that final 51-7, or? You didn't get that one right, it's okay. It's fine. Hey, you didn't get that, it's okay. We know Harding won, that's all. I'll get it later. Yeah. Well, this one will be in the end zone. I will. Bison have won, they have deferred. Oklahoma Baptist will kick with the wind of their back and for the 18th time this year, Guillermo Garcia puts it in the back of the end zone for a touchback. And Southeastern will have the football at the 25 yard line. There's actually a flag down, it's offsides against Oklahoma Baptist so they will advance the football up to the 30 yard line and that's where Southeastern will have it first down and 10. Dalton Hatley is the quarterback, 6'1", 210 pounds, a junior from Clovis, New Mexico. And you can hear the wind whipping at our crowd, Mike. He has completed 65% of his passes this season for almost 1,800 yards. He'll open with C.J. Shavers, the senior tailback from Dallas, Texas, in the backfield. Southeastern of the white, blue, and black uniforms, along with gold trim and the black and gold bottoms. 
Here we go, first play on homecoming night at Bison Hill. Kind of the snap coming back from Caleb Weatherford and back to throw as Hatley throws it out left and the ball is juggled and it is caught. But for a minimal game, Deuce Pittman had his hands on it all the way at the 36, but by the time he juggled it and hauled it in, he only gets two for a second and eight. That reminds me of what was talked about on the pregame show. We're going to have to keep our hands on the ball no matter what. It just happened to be the other team this time. 21st reception for the sophomore wide receiver, Deuce Pittman out of Frisco, Texas. From the 32, Southeastern second down and eight with 14.26 to play here in the opening quarter. A huge matchup. OBU probably needing to win out for any postseason hope. The Bison are four and three after snapping a two-game win or losing skid last week at Ada. Southeastern is six and one. Bison showing some pressure again. They hand it off to Shavers. He runs away for the pressure, and he's got room. 50 on the far side boundary. He's chased down in OBU territory at the 39-yard line. There you see, guys, exactly what Chris Jensen was talking about, how much more improved that Savage Storm front truly is. You had very good penetration from the right side of the offense, as, but when he ran left away from that pressure, they, Southeastern just breaks through. 30 yards for C.J. Shaver by six. That is his longest run of the season. 13-26 to play in the first quarter, and Southeastern is advanced in the Bison territory. Ball on the left side hash. They have a bunch formation just flanked off the right side of the line of scrimmage. They give it straight ahead to C.J. Shavers, and he moves forward to advance it for four to the 34-yard line. So Southeastern, who averages over five yards per snap on offense this year, almost six yards per snap, Bettering that, here with their opening drive against Oklahoma Baptist in a Bison defense that comes in ranked fifth in total defense, allowing just 379 yards per ball game. Second down and six. Line of scrimmage is at the 32-yard line, or make that the 34-yard line. After Deuce, or C.J. Shavers, just carried a moment ago. Five receivers, an empty set for Hatley. Back to throw as Dalton throws it out right. Ball is caught at the 30 and immediately hit and tackled at the 29-yard line. The reception was made by Cottrell Blakely, a junior wide receiver from Mesquite, Texas. And either one of the stop was Trajan Lands, who played pretty well last week at a little at East Central. Good job by the Bison being close to the wide receivers, especially on that very first play that Southeastern ran with the tip up, tip up to, to his pass with two with Tyler King being really close. That prevented Southeastern from a big game. Southeastern just outside the red zone. They were at the 28 of Oklahoma Baptist, fifth play of the drive. It started after an offsides penalty of the kickoff against OBU at the 30, and they've yet to go to third down. Shavers is back in the backfield. Hatley gets the handoff. To Shavers, running room up the middle, and it closes quickly as he spun down at the 25-yard line. That play was read perfectly because it looked like it was going to go for a lot more, but Malik Allen at defensive end was the one that knocked him down. Yeah, because Shavers was going to get loose. He cut back, he went right, kicked right back up toward between the goal post from outside the 20. Two years ago in Durant, Shivers carried 16 times for 53 yards and a touchdown. Over you won it 34-31 in what turned out to be a 1-10 season, the first season for Tyler Finwick after coming from Missouri S&T down to Southeastern. But they had a chance to win about five or six games, losing those totals by less than a touchdown. Pablo Perini motions to the near side. They give it straight ahead to Shavers again. Shavers gets out of the tackle of Robert Lolafia and manages to get five on second and seven down to the 20-yard uh, line. And one dog, there's not very many guys that get out of the grasp of Lolafia, but Shavers did it just right there. Yeah, one thing about Robert Lolafia, he'll take on the offensive line and at the same time and still make the tackle. Just outstanding athleticism by Lolafia. They actually spotted it back at the 22, so it is a gain of just three, bringing up third down and four. We're under 11 minutes to go here in the first quarter. Southeastern primarily doing it on the ground against the win. Trips left, twins to the near side, empty backfield. Hatley throws. Low looking for the end zone, and the ball is incomplete. Well defended that time by Tyler King, and King was looking for, I believe, Braxton Kincaid. Great job by Tyler King, step for step on that flag pattern. There was no chance really to uh, complete that pass. It's a good thing it was overthrown 
because King might have had a pick. Southeastern starts the contest, failing to convert on third down. The Savage Storm, sixth best of the conference at just under 44%. They look like they're going to go for it for the eighth time this year. They've been good. The league's best, converting six of seven fourth down tries. Fourth and four at the 20-yard line. Two receivers left, tied in that way as well as Parini. Single receiver to the near side is Marquise Gray. Back to throw his hat. Protection holds. He throws it out left to the ball is Scott. Coming back to make the catch is Deuce Pittman, and he fell down as he made the reception of the 16-yard line. So that will be enough for first down number three for Southeastern. And he knew exactly where he was supposed to be, went up, turned at a little hook, and protected uh, any possibility of an interception, got it, and had the first down. First down and 10, Southeastern at the 16-yard line. Guys, OBU has got a better job on third defensively. Their opponents now are over 500 for the season. They've converted over 50% of their third down tries. And on fourth down, opponents are now 50% at 6 of 11. Barini starts the motion out of the pistol formation. Hatley turns and gives it to Shavers. He's hit the backfield and managed to get to the 15, Trajan Lands having a big opening drive defensively for the Bison, the first to get there. Great job by Trajan Lands. He was on the right side of the Southeastern offense, goes all the way across the, the field and catches them at the, just past the tight end. Southeastern last week owned a time of possession advantage of almost 17 minutes over Northwestern. They have it second down inside the red zone with 9.19 to play here in the first quarter. Two receivers stacked left, one receiver to the near side. OBU showing some blitz off the right side of the formation. They pick it up. Hatley throws it out left. It is caught at the eight, and he turns up field and out of bounds. That's Kincaid again on the reception, and they will knock him out of bounds at the five. That is going to be enough for a first down. It's first and goal to go, Savage Storm. Well, there was so much separation there between the, the secondary and that wide receiver I mean it was, it was I, I thought it was amazing he was able to catch the ball he almost walked into the end zone huge crowd here at Crane Family Stadium at the Hurt Athletic Complex silenced right now as Southeastern has it first and goal to go the Savage a fourth of the Great American Conference 21 of 31 28 of 31 of the red zone with 22 touchdowns man motions from right to left it has shavers in the backfield they give it to CJ over left guard and nowhere to go. He's cut down at the five. Second and goal to go. This is a big defensive stand, Juan Dog, if you can hold him to three. Great job by Malika Allen getting in the backfield. That's the second time Allen has been in the backfield. He failed to get Shivers that first time when he went around the left, left in for his longest run of the year. 17 plays on the drive. This is number 17, and we're under eight minutes to play here in the first quarter. That is one way to beat your opponent when you have the win of over 20 miles per hour in your face. Shavers and Hatley in the backfield. Shavers has a 30-yard run already on this drive. The tight end is Jacob Reyes. He motions to the far side. They give it that way to Shavers. Tiptoeing his way up behind left guard. Nowhere to go. He picks up a yard and is cut down immediately. Felipe Albiar made the stop, and now it's third and goal to go. Savage Storm at the four. Great job by Felipe Albiar. He's the safety standing in the end zone on the play. He reads it. The, the play off tackle on the left side of the offense comes right in, fills the hole. Largest crowd of the season, a warm evening. Temperatures in the low 80s and a breezy evening here at Crane Family Stave of the Hurt Athletic Complex. Third and goal to go at the four. Southwest or Southeastern gets a free play. OBU jump. They throw it in the back left corner of the end zone. For Marquise Gray, he was defended well. It's off his fingertips. It'll be half the distance to the goal line. So third and goal from the two after OBU has committed their second offside penalty of the contest. The second and or make that third and goal to go for Southeastern with 7.15 to go here in the first quarter. Savage Storm raised eyebrows when they scored late to beat Harding 32-31 of the season over. They would not lose until they lost to Henderson State down at Durant a few weeks ago. And that was a slugfest. Third and goal to go. Big play here. Can OBU keep them out of the end zone? They bring a fullback in. Hatley goes under center. Play action pass. Rolling right. Receiver wide open. It's Jacob Reyes for the touchdown. I mean, nobody within 10 yards of that tight end. Nobody picked him up. It was a nice play fake and a nice uh, roll out to the right. 
wide open, easy touchdown. Second receiving touchdown for the tight end core for Tyler Fenwick's ball club. Only the second catch of the first touchdown for the redshirt freshman from Irving Nimitz High School down in Texas, Jacob Reyes. On for the extra point is Trey Keats. He is 28 of 29. He'll boot into the wind on extra point tries this time. The backup quarterback, Russell Riley, holds it. The snap is back. Ball is down. Plenty of leg. And Keats makes it 7 up in Southeastern. We'll step aside for these messages. The first quarter brought to you by Noble McIntyre and McIntyre Law. 7 8 to play. Opening quarter, 7 up in Southeastern on the OBU Football Network. SSM helps. I'm Noble McIntyre. And I'm Jordan Klinger of McIntyre Law. The devastation of losing a loved one is impossible to measure. When it happens because of someone else's negligence, the grief can be overwhelming. Wrongful death cases are unique. Whether the cause was an automobile, semi, motorcycle, medical malpractice, or job-related accident, we can help. If you want to know more about your family's rights, call us. The consultation is free. We love what we do, and we're good at it. We are trial lawyers. Call McIntyre Law today. Play 70 yards on the drive for Southeastern, and it took up right at, in fact, just a little more than half of the first quarter going into that brisk wind out of the south. You know, I thought this, uh, up until the final three plays of that drive, the first 10 plays had been in rapid fire session. Now, I just did a little bit of math. That's 13 plays, 37 seconds a snap, which is still you know, pretty healthy. But those first 10 plays, they were on, they were on the move. That offense was really, uh, it was crisp, but it was very, very quick. Quite frankly, to hold them out of the end zone for half a quarter, really from the defensive standpoint, not quite as bad as it looks. Seven away to go, first quarter. They will place the ball on the tee. It will be held on by Ty, Ty, uh, Ty Williams, number 27. And kicking it away will be Jackson Nally, who is also the punter for Southeastern. Jai Moore, Keelan Harris back to receive it. This should be returned into the wind, and it will from the 12-yard line. Harris down the numbers, 20, 25. Keelan leaps over a tackler, 30, 25 to the 40, and he's out of bounds as he angles right into the southwestern bench at the 42-yard line. And, guys, he was an eyelash away from taking that one 90-plus. That's how you win against good teams because – Kalon Harris is a guy you want the football in his hands. He hurdled two tacklers over there outside the numbers on the right side. Harris came in averaging 25 yards of return, bolstered by an 87-yard run for a score against Northwestern back in week three. He gets 30 on that one at OBU, has good starting field position with the wind of their back at the 42. Stever motions to the near side, so it's an empty set for Hare. Quick drop, pump fakes, throws out right, and it's Shea Garner who has it across the 40. Five and tiptoes out of bounds for a five-yard gain to the 47. I, I, Garner did a great job there. With the, the, the defensive back was smothering him, and he's right on the sideline at his own bench, leaped up, was able to get his feet down. Preston Hare last week eclipsed 10,000 passing yards and is three touchdown passes away for 100. He throws it out left. Harris makes a turn inside, and he is right at the first down marker of the 48-yard line of Southeastern. And he made a good, quick turn after the catch. I like what Oklahoma Baptist is doing. Southeastern chews up half the quarter on its first drive. OB wanting to take advantage of the win, all three passing plays. Harris comes out of the light up, and now coming in is going to be Braden Phipps, the wide receiver from Jinx, Oklahoma. Phipps will line up along with Josh Cordell to the near side. Twins to the far side. That's Clark and Marshall with Steber in the backfield. OBU scrimmages for the first time for the southeastern end of the field. Harris going to keep it on a read, and he angles out of bounds at the 41 of southeastern. So Preston Hare gets seven on first down, and that was a designed run all the way by QB1. Good job by Hare with the, the fake. He, he pulled in defensive end Roderick Kirby just enough to just get around the end. Second down and short. They put it at the 40, so he managed about seven and a half yards. Pistol formation again. Three receivers to the near side. Hare drops, pocket holds, throws out right. And he threw it right into the southeastern bench, and he threw it right to Stephen Dadzi, who was standing over there on the sideline. Well, he threw it 
out of bounds. Somebody didn't run the right route. That, that was supposed to be an up and out that time. And uh, the intended receiver on the far side uh, took a little slant play inside. Guys, this is a stat we've got to watch tonight. Can OBU sustain drives on third down? They're doing it against the league's best third down conversion defense. Southeastern allowance is 31%. Meanwhile, the Bison third best at 51.5% on third down tries. And we get a timeout on the field. It's timeout Southeastern. Savage Storm lead in Shawnee by a count of 7 to nothing. With 5.30 to go here in the first quarter, we'll step aside for these messages from Noble McIntyre on the Bison Radio Network. Estate planning is a crucial step in protecting your family's future. With an estate plan, you can decide how to distribute your assets, make health care decisions, and support ministries after you pass away. It involves some pretty big decisions. But with guidance from Water's Edge, you can plan for your children's future, give to kingdom causes, and get expert help along the way. Build a solid foundation for your family. Start your estate plan today. Visit watersedgeservices.org. Time to wake up, Todd. <laughs> Third down and a couple at the 40-yard line of Southeast, and more than likely the Bison are in two-down territory, trailing by a touchdown here early. Three receivers left, OBU wearing green and white tops over black bottoms. They empty the backfield, Stever comes in motion, Harris going to keep it on a design quarterback draw, gets out of an ankle tackle, and it's inside the 35-yard line, and all the way down to the 30 of Southeastern. Hey, Todd, what I liked about that was it was designed, and Preston took two steps. He could have cut back to his left and basically slid down and had the first down. I liked it. He kept to his right, not only cut to his right, then hopped around a defender, ended up getting about six more than what you would have expected. Here, 125 net yards, long of 16, managed 10 on that. First down and 10 at the 30 of Southeastern for OBU. Tied in his right, hand off that way to Stever, makes a little cut. Steve Stever not going much of anywhere as he'll be tackled at about the 27-yard line, a gain of about a yard and a half. And we're already under five minutes to play in this very quickly played first quarter of homecoming football in Shawnee, 6-0 Southeastern. Outstanding play call on that third down play because Southeastern just had three down linemen and they had four uh, safeties with defensive backs. Hare read that perfectly to easily get that short. Gain to short. the 27, brings up second down and long. They empty the backfield again. Preston swings it out left. Tyler Stever with running room. First down, 20. Down the battery, 15 to the 10. And he is out of bounds inside the 10 at the 7-yard line of Southeastern. And, guys, you can see that one developing all the way from upstairs. Well, you certainly could because uh, the two receivers on this near side pulled everybody defensively back into the middle of the field, Scott, and I mean it was an avenue down the near boundary. First and goal to go for Oklahoma Baptist. Stever with his 10th catch of the year is in the backfield from the seven-yard line of Southeastern Hare. Throws a timing pattern for Cordell in the end zone, and he was tied up with Keyshawn Somerville, the quarter, bring up second down and 10. I know you're wondering. You're just dying to know what OBU is in the red zone. They're fifth of the conference, 27 of 29, with 27 of those scores, 24 of them being touchdowns. Now I put your mind at ease, right, Brooksy? Yeah. I'm feeling good now. Second down and 10 at the seven yard line. Sam Sharp, the tight end, is out there on the field. Bison, again, have been very good inside the red zone. Of their 16 touchdowns, 15 have been on the ground. Cornell motions from left to right of the formation they give it to stever he's hemmed in and tyler ducks down and is able to get maybe a yard to the six it's going to bring up third down and goal to go with 341 to play in the first quarter southeastern leading six nothing i do think this I, I, on a couple of passes especially that one two plays earlier to cornell it sailed with that wind behind you scott i think sometimes you got to be a little bit careful that ball will sail on you sometimes when you let her go yeah a little bit i think he's looking for the back shoulder throw to cornell and he was just caught up with the cornerback cornell was looking at the official saying hey i want to fly here reuben thompson is the single setback wide right michael marshall watch for him in this situation for the six phelps motions from left to right of the formation ob you trying to get the game tied. It's a keeper. Harris hit the backfield, turns the corner. Preston angling left, gets to the six, and he's out of bounds. So it was well diagnosed that time by Southeastern, and the tackle made by Jalon Freeman, the 
fifth, fourth linebacker out, out there from Cedar Hill, Texas. I like the play that OBU is doing because Hare can run. Oklahoma Baptist did that last week in Ada where they had designed runs for Hare. But very good defense by Southeastern not allowing Hare to turn the corner. Okay, they give him a two-yard loss, so it's fourth and goal to go, and that means we will see Yermo Garcia out for a 25-yard field goal with the wind. Out of the hold of McCasson, the snap from Russell. Everything is perfect, and the three-pointer is good. Exactly what the doctor ordered. You give up a long 13-play drive, you come back and manage to get something in your own right. 2.44 to play, opening period. Homecoming night in Shawnee, 6-3 Southeastern. We'll pause for these local messages on the Bison Radio Network. is the Durant native Sky Low along with the usual kickoff returner Marquise Gray. GG approaches the wind as you might expect blows it off of the tee so the Bison will call for a holder. One kickoff already for Garcia and a touchback where it's 6-3 with 2.44 to go here in quarter number one. Todd Miller, John Brooks, Scott Wattis, John Zonlo, the crew with you here on a picture perfect late October evening. Garcia looks right, looks left, and he will approach from 10 yards. He will boot it away, and this one will easily go out of bounds. In fact, by about 10 yards, it goes out of bounds. And are they saying that it went out of bounds at the two? Yeah, it's going to be the first down at the 35. Wow, I thought the thing had enough to get into the end zone, but you're right. It's going to be first to 10 of the 35-yard line. That's a bad mistake for the freshman kicker right there. Well, you know, the wind is it, its well over 25 miles an hour now out of the south. But the thing is, uh, Scotty, that wind is coming across the field a little bit too and that's what uh, that's what happened right there that wind coming from the east just blew it out of bounds well then he needs to put the t on the right hash and that would eliminate that problem you got it but you know what it almost looked like i thought what todd was saying that it was inside the end zone but the side judge is right there underneath it saying that it didn't it went outside the pylon the andre wheeler is going to start this possession for southeastern in the backfield he's a 5'10", 215 pound redshirt freshman from Winota, Texas. 59 carries, eight touchdowns. Three receivers left. They do not have a tight end of this package. OBU showing some pressure off the right of the offensive formation. Wheeler gets the handoff in a gaping hole as he's dump trucked down at the 42 yard line. He gets seven guys, but I think he managed five before anybody even touched him. Well, Devin Mitchell, the offensive lineman, 280, 65, 280, just had a pancake block on a bison to widen open that hole. Giving eight as they put the football down to the 43, so it's second down and two. Just over two minutes to play in the first quarter, 6-3 Southeastern. Wheeler again as they keep it on the ground, running right, has a first down as he's tackled at the 49-yard line, had his feet taken out from underneath him by Peter, Pap Peter Papula. Yeah, you guys talked in the pregame about how big this offensive line was, and they made some adjustments from last year being 1-10. 
and doing really good because the left tackle is Devin Mitchell, and he pulled all the way on that previous play to open up that hole. Todd Throckmorton, who is also the offensive coordinator down at Durant for Tyler Fenwick's club, also is the offensive line coach. First and 10, Savage Storm is the move from left to right, late first quarter at their own 49-yard line. Three receivers left. They'll throw a little screen out to the far side. The ball is caught looking for blockers, not much. OBU closed quickly and tackles him at the 47-yard line. It was Nick Boone with that truck down. Control Blakely. Great job by Nick Boone. He's the linebacker. And the throw goes to the left side with the screens. Two, three wide receivers left, two of them blocking. So the cornerback and the safety's blocked, but Boone comes to the rescue. 70 seconds in County to play first quarter, 6-3 <laughs> Southeaster. They've moved again into Oklahoma Baptist territory at the Knights at 47. Three receivers to the near side. Single receiver left is Blakely. Wheeler gets the handoff. Wheeler dodges tacklers in the backfield and manages to get free to the 44. And he had some nifty footwork, guys, just to get A back to the line of scrimmage and B to turn that into a positive run. Noah Velliser did a good job coming in with the penetration in the second tier of the OBU defense. He's usually a linebacker. He's a linebacker all the time when they have the three down linemen, but sometimes on the four down linemen, he'll be up there on the line. Well, you need to get a stop here and make a punt into the wind. It's third down along three at the 44. They will have to snap it. A difference of about eight on the play and game clock. Out of the shotgun is Hatley. He's joined to the backfield by the Andre Wheeler. Wheeler gets the handoff, surges forward, did not get there. OBU has denied him at the 43-yard line. He needed to get to the 41, and it is now fourth and two. And that will be the final play of the first quarter. An entertaining one, to say the least, in Shawnee. 15 minutes in the books, your score, Southeastern Six, Oklahoma Baptist three. The first quarter has been brought to you by Noble McIntyre, McIntyre Law on the Bison Radio Network. Noble McIntyre, McIntyre Law. We have over 100 years of combined litigation experience fighting for Oklahomans injured by medical malpractice and medical devices. These injuries are caused by medical products including defective hip implants, hernia mesh and breast implants, and IVC filters, as well as drugs such as Valsartan, Zoralto, and Celgens. If you have been injured and want to learn more about your rights, call us right now. The consultation is free. We love what we do, and we're good at it. We are trial lawyers. Call McIntyre Law today. Fenwick has his offense out there. They have been able to control this game with their running game. And now they have that wind out of the south about 25 miles per hour out of their back. They will go for it on fourth down for the second time. They hand it to Wheeler. He's got running room. 40, and he is finally tripped up at the 47-yard line, 49. running between DeJounte Granger and James Walker. And that offensive line, guys, has just inserted its will on the Bison. The Bison actually were pretty good at the point of attack. Give it up to Wheeler. He saw it was kind of clogged up just off right tackle. He kicks it out around right end to get that first down. C.J. Shavers got the first series. DeAndre Wheeler is out there for the second. Savage Storm moving into OBU territory after the drive started at the 35. Baldwin Garcia is kicking a bounds. It's now first and 10 Southeastern at the 37. Three receivers left, they fake the handoff. Hatley is gonna go deep, throws near side, incomplete. As he was looking for Hunter Hawthorne, it looked like he was looking deep over the middle, then all of a sudden Hawthorne kind of released. And then Hatley, I think, went to his second or third read. Hawthorne was wide open on that crossing route toward the left sideline. Was dragged as by two Bison, but still four yards apart. Just a bad early throw. Bison football brought to you by SSM Health, St. Anthony Hospital, Shawnee, and also by ShopOBUBison.com. 
Second down and 10. Hatley is now 6 of 7 for 30 yards through the air. On a scrimmage at the Oklahoma Baptist 37-yard line. Wheeler with the backfield. Hatley to throw for the 44. Throws over the middle, and it's offline. He had Hawthorne beyond the first down marker, guys, but he threw it to the outside, and Hawthorne had kind of sat down and was looking more towards the middle of the field. Part of that reason is because Peter Papula was on Hatley really fast, coming through the middle. Put pressure on the quarterback to get that ball out of his hand. 14-09 to play first half. Southeastern leads 6-3, taking the first drive of the ball game. 13 plays, 70 yards, but the extra point missed. Looms large right now. Bison showing some pressure up the middle with Josh Arnold. The tight end is lined up wide. That's Pablo Perini. Two receivers that way and one flank to the near side. Wheeler remains out there as a single setback. It's actually Shavers. Shavers gets the block, and the pass is incomplete. He was looking left for Deuce Pittman, and now a flag comes in very, very late as that ball sailed well out of the range of Deuce Pittman. And I can tell you right now, you can see it if you're watching on the video, that Hatley is not at all happy with his receiver. Well, not at all. I mean, Pittman well, went up and, and, and ran up and out at the 20-yard line. They, they thought he was going deep down the near sideline. He threw the ball down inside the 10-yard line. It was a total mix-up on the In row, sickness, personal foul. It's Pittman on combat against Southeastern. Now, this huge homecoming crowd involved in the ball game. It also means that because it was a dead ball penalty, they will assess it in Southeastern now. We'll have to. You're right, it's gonna be fourth down. Fourth down, they're gonna to have to punt the football. A lot of scrimmage is at the 48 yard line, so we will see Jackson Nally, the freshman from Wiley, Texas, as you can hear the wind whipping in our crowd line. He will have that wind to his back here for his first punt of the night. Nally on the season averaging on 28 punts, just over 34 yards per boot. Shea Garner back to receive. Nally takes a step right and then shanked it. Not a good punt at all. It hits at the 30 and then goes out of bounds near the 28-yard line. That is not the best effort of the season for Jackson Nally. And OBU a chance to take their first lead of the contest with 13.58 to play here in the first quarter. Down 6-3, to three, just a 24-yard effort by Jackson. Jackson, he took a long time to get that punt off as well. Two Bison could have had that. They pulled up. Don't worry if the Oklahoma back is supposed to see that. It might put on a block this time. Good, good. Go ahead, Brooks. Well, uh, just very quickly, first uh, quarter stats. I know we're a minute in, but uh, first quarter stats. Uh, uh, Southeastern, 91 to the yard, 61 on the ground, 30 to the air. Uh, OBU at 19 on the ground, 31 to the air for 50. Happy homecoming day here in Shawnee. From the Baptist Athletics today, off to a really good start. Football the finale. Today, the Great American Conference wins and women's cross country championships for a win in Searcy, Arkansas. OBU's women nudged Arkansas Tech for the team title. The men finished second behind host Harding. Soccer today avenged the home loss to Washita Baptist, winning 2 0 over at Arkadelphia. Here at 6-3 Southeastern in football as we get ready for the first second quarter possession for OBU, Wandog going into that wind. Let's see what the Bison can do. Hopefully, I want to see a pass on first down and open it up for Stever on second. 13.58 to play here in the first half. Preston Hare gets the snap, hands it off to Stever. He's hit behind the line, and Tyler is able to lunge forward to gain a couple to the 27-yard line. Tyler Stever last week had his sixth career 100-yard rushing game. What's big about that? Well, first of all, it's impressive in a little more than two years, but the Bison, when Tyler Stever, the All-Stater from Washington, rushes for 100-plus, 6-0. Second down at 8 at the 27-yard line. Stever remains in the backfield. Preston Hare fakes the handoff. Now he's in trouble, and down he goes. Well, it's happened three times, and on the uh, fourth time, Southeastern finally got it figured out defensively. I mean, they were all over here. Nobody bit that at all. A loss of five back to the 22. Cameron Tate was the one that finished him off, but I'll tell you who made the play. It was Alexei Marshall, the junior defensive end from Houston, Texas. And that was an option play for Hare. If he would have handled that off to Stever, Stever would have turned the corner. 
we waited and made the mistake, and then we had the penetration sites. OBU on third down tries today is one of two. This is their longest try against one of the best third down conversion defenses in the league. Third and 13, they empty the backfield. Preston Hare throws it out near side for Julian Clark with blockers, 30-35. Clark has a first down. As he is finally tackled by the Lombo, the free safety, but not before he advances the ball to the 37. That was a terrific call upstairs by buddy Daniel Eaton. The only way they get a first down on that screen pass was the blocking by the three wide receivers, Jay Garner, Julian Clark, and Keelan Harris. They needed 13. They got 15. And back to the ground game at Stever straight ahead. Tyler lunches across the 40. He's close to the 41, so giving four on first down. Maybe you just have to run the football guys, I think you would agree, enough to keep Southeastern honest today. It's going to be tough sledding between the tackles for Stever and Thompson. Well, you can see Southeastern's waiting for Stever on first down. Last week, the Bison threw quite a bit on first down, shook it up against East Central. Julian Clark motions from left or right to left of the formation. Preston here, a quick drop, throws it over the middle. He's got Cordell, his first catch of the day. And Josh Cordell is down to the 49-yard line, a first down reception. And for Josh Cordell, reception number 142. What's significant about that? He now has surpassed Stefan Turner for second in career catches here on Bison Hill. Great job by Cornell finding that soft spot in the zone between actually five defenders. First and 10 OBU, they motion Stever. Now they'll throw it out the right flat. Tyler gets to the quarter, 45. He is to the 40 in Southeastern. And another first down as he goes out of bounds into the OBU ditch. All the way to the 38-yard line. So it'll be a gain of 13. Stever with his second catch of the afternoon and his 11th of his junior season. Isn't it funny how sometimes it looks so easy? It's looked easy the last two times he's thrown it out in the flat. Reuben Thompson replaces Steve in the lineup. They have two receivers stacked to the near side. One of those is Keelon Harris. He motions to the far side. Sharp is tied in this way as well. They hand it off to Reuben Thompson, who jitterbugs behind left guard. And gets close to the 33, so it's five right there for Reuben Thompson. It's good to see him finally getting his just rewards after being a terrific program player up until his senior season. Good job by Thompson hitting the hole really quick, left off tackle. Second down at five, OBU going quickly. Sham Sharp is tied in left. High snap, they'll hand it off again to Thompson. A little bit of running room, and it closes quickly. Forward progress. They're getting close to the 30-yard line of Southeastern, and now another late flag comes in from the side judge over your boundary. Southeastern from time to time has the propensity to Talk themselves, and I mean unsportsmanlike conducts, into some problems. It happened against Southern Nazarene and kept that score probably closer than it should have been. Last week, Southeastern was penalized eight times, the second most flags they've had in a game this year, behind the 100-plus penalty yardage that they had against Arkansas Tech earlier in the year. Here comes dead ball, personal foul, and that is against the Savage Story. That's the second major penalty to the against Southeastern. I guess on the corner by Kayshawn Somerville, right up alongside the Oklahoma Baptist bench. So the football will be in the red zone at the 15-yard line. After the run of the 15-yard foul, Bison are into the red zone for a second time. They are one of one tonight, having kicked a 25-yard Garcia field goal to cap their first drive. Preston Hare with Reuben Thompson in the backfield. Bison moving from left to right into the wind. They hand it to Reuben. They came with a blitz left, and Reuben ran away from it, but they were able to recover and clean things up right at the 15. So no gain, second and long. Well, that draw play is perfect for the blitz. As you mentioned, Southeastern recovered quickly to stop that run. 6-3, Savage Storm. It has been a defensive battle, at least on the scoreboard at this point. We are under 10 minutes to play here in the first half from Shawnee. Thompson is set back left. Motion man is Garner to the far side. Back to throw his hair. He'll swing it out left again for Thompson. Gets a block, and Thompson then is finally caught at the 12-yard line. He got a block for Keelan Harris, or was it Garner? And it looked like that was going to be enough, Scott, to spring him, but Southeastern with really good speed on the defensive side. Yeah, Shea Garner with a nice low block with the shoulder, 
which is legal on the line of scrimmage, to take down one tackler. And it looked like a big hole there for Thompson. He just couldn't get by the next defender. First catch of the night for Reuben Thompson, and he only manages three. It is third down at seven at the 12. Tied in right, Sam Sharp. Back to throw is Preston Hare. Looking deep right in the back corner. They get up for Harris. They are grabbing him, and they, now they finally throw the flag. Keyshawn Somerville again just pulling Ke Keelon Harris's number one jersey all the way below his waist. I'll tell you what, if they don't throw a flag and the guy that was standing right there did not throw the flag, no, he, he needs to turn in his stripes because that was an easy call, as easy as he'll ever get. Mike Self, the side judge, is only 10, 15 feet away from the tugger on. It ends up That's being, I believe, it was the field judge, I think, who threw the flag, was No, he's the back judge. That judge threw, uh, threw the flag from the back of the end zone at least probably 20 yards away or 20, 35 feet away from the play. First and goal to go at the two. OBU is that close to taking their first lead of the night with 9.04 to play here in the first half. They have a half diamond look in the backfield. The tailback is Stever behind Hare in a pistol formation. They give it to Tyler, and he is dump truck down for about a yard gain to the one. Stever, when these two teams played in Durant, was held in check two years ago. He carried four times for 11 yards. His longest was a five-yard touchdown run. He manages one there. It's second down and goal to go. Clock continuing to tick down with 8.36 to play in the first half. Great tackle by Josh Malumba, the defensive back. Second down and goal. And out of the Wildcats, Tyler Stever is in for the touchdown. Once again, that misdirection moves to the southeast from the defense uh -oh, to the right, which was Sam Sharp went in motion right on that snap, direct snap to Stevens. Guys, I am becoming a huge, huge fan of Sam Sharp. That guy does everything you want to tie him to do. A terrific blocker. He has good hands for the, for the passing game. Here is Garcia for the point after try to make it 10-6 Oklahoma Baptist. Ball is down. The kick is on the way. And the extra point is good. Just got it inside the left upright. Time out of the field. 8.32 to play in the first half. On homecoming night, Oklahoma Baptist for the first advantage. They need one speed in Southeast at 10-6 in the second quarter. Brought to you by the OBU College of Graduate and Professional Studies on the Bikes of Network. Estate planning is a crucial step in protecting your family's future. With an estate plan, you can decide how to distribute your assets, make healthcare decisions, and support ministries after you pass away. It involves some pretty big decisions, but with guidance from Water's Edge, you can plan for your children's future, give to kingdom causes, and get expert help along the way. Build a solid foundation for your family. Start your estate plan today. Visit watersedgeservices.org. and one into the end zone. This one will hang up as expected, and it is going to be misplayed. The ball is still free on the turf, and I think OBU's come up with it. They have. The Bison have come up with a deep onside kick. It was not intended to be an onside kick, however, it was misplayed that time between Deuce Pittman and Marquise Gray. Pittman all of a sudden got out of the way, and then Gray tried to come up and make the recovery, the ball bounced away from him, and Matt Norman, who was cat quick, was Johnny on the spot to recover it. That was cat quick, too, because Matt Norman totally had to dive for that football before it went out of bounds, and 
landed on it with his knees before it actually has to get into that First and 10 to the red zone at the 19 of Southeastern for Preston Hare and Company. Hare drops to the 28, throwing deep left, looking for Harris. He's got him in the left corner of the end zone, and he led him a little too far. Boy, I love it, guys. I love the call. Go for the juggler right after the turnover. All right, let's go back to the kick, okay? I don't think it was a pooch on, on, on uh, I don't think it was by design. I think he kicked it as hard as he could. That wind is, it, the wind is at least five to seven, eight miles an hour more than it was at, at, at the beginning of the game. It just hung, dropped in between everybody's like It was like the shortstop, the second baseman, center fielder all came in, nobody got the ball. No man's land is where it hit. Second and 10 at the 19-yard line. Reuben Thompson is the tailback. Hare under pressure, throws it out left. Ball is caught. Phipps at the 14-yard line. A gain of five that now makes it third and very miserable for LBU. The Bison are two of four against a really good third down conversion defense. And on the previous play, I thought that was a perfect throw by Preston Hare. Keelan Harris is wide open, but then he tripped a little bit, and he fell behind that open. Third down and five. The line of scrimmage at the southeastern 14-yard line. Josh Cornell has been relatively quiet. Motions to the near side. Back to throw his hair. He's looking over the middle. He has a receiver. And the ball is caught at the seven-yard line. That is Michael Marshall. And that should be enough to reach the down marker. And it will. It's going to be first to go to go for OBU. Hey, there's a little bump that's worked well through the first quarter and a half. Really and then it will open it up just like uh, Keelan Harris got loose for that wide open play. That Michael just Marshall missed. with his first catch of the night for six, and it's a big one on third down and five. First and goal to go, Bison at the eight-yard line. Tops it off, set for the right of Preston Hare. Hare fakes the handoff, throws a slant over the middle, and it's caught. Josh Cornell, touchdown, Oklahoma Baptist. And it's Cornell set up Jeremiah Baldwin for right quarterback for Southeastern with a little step to the outside, and then the perfect timing slant. On the inside, right to Josh Cornell for the easy score. 98th career touchdown pass for Preston Hare. Only two others can be on choosing. Eric Ritter in the history of the Eight American Conference has won more than 100. Preston on the cusp of joining that duo. Here is the extra point. High snap. McCassum gets it down. And Ro uh, Garcia rockets through the extra point. 7-18 to play. And Oklahoma Baptist now has scored 17 unanswered. More importantly, they make the visitors from Durant pay for the special team's mistake. Back in a moment on the Bison Radio Network. Noble McIntyre, McIntyre Law. We have over 100 years of combined litigation experience fighting for Oklahomans injured by medical malpractice and medical devices. These injuries are caused by medical products including defective hip implants, hernia mesh and breast implants, and IVC filters, as well as drugs such as Valsartan, Zeralto, and Celgens. If you have been injured and want to learn more about your rights, call us right now. The consultation is free. We love what we do, and we're good at it. We are trial lawyers. Call McIntyre Law today. University Athletics for the best selection of officially licensed gifts, apparel, and more with proceeds benefiting OBU. Short drive, four plays, 19 yards, capped by the 22nd career receiving touchdown of the brilliant career of Josh Cordell, 17 to 6. Here is the left to right boot from Garcia, and this is a deeper kick, and it's going to be returned straddling the 10. Inside the numbers to the 15, to the 20, bang, down he goes. Good kick coverage on special teams by Oklahoma Baptist. They are really fired up right now. There's Cody Norris, the junior from Irving, Texas, was punished on that return. And you talk about special teams looking for that complete game that OBU needs to play, defense, offense, and special teams. They're doing that so far tonight with that awesome recovery and then good coverage, as Todd mentioned. 7-14 to play, first half. Todd Miller, John Brooks, Scott Wattis, John Zonlo, our crew here at Crane Family Stadium of the Hearn Athletic Complex. And here, full house for homecoming 2021, the culmination of a great week of activities here in Shawnee. Hatley gets the snap. He will turn it, hand it off. That's DeAndre Wheeler. And Wheeler with nimble feet. Runs up field and is tackled at the 27 yard line a gain of about five. Going to bring up for a second down. Would, uh, would it surprise you if 
you mentioned Josh Arnold made that stop? No. <laughs> Nothing surprises me. Arnold, number one, coming in. Nick Boone, number two in the Great American Conference in individual tackles through seven games. Bison, four and three. Southeastern, six and one through seven weeks. Second down and five. Oklahoma Baptist at the, or Southeastern, to their own 28-yard line. Again, they hand it off into the middle of the line. Nothing doing. Nothing doing as they went to DeAndre Wheeler again, and the interior of that defensive front, Scott, greeted him rudely. Oh, oh, Jackson Turner getting up in there, the newcomer. Jackson Turner filled that hole, and then everybody with a great game plan. I'm going to look out for a big shot here by Saul. I stand corrected, guys. That was Lindale, Texas senior Ryan Taylor, number 31, that carried. I have another thought on that point here in a moment, Scott, after this play. Third and five in the 28-yard line. Back to throw. Hatley throws it over the middle. Ball is caught, and it looks like he is wrapped up short of the yardage. The game can be over. Franco was the one that made the catch. It looks like it was made for 32, which from the spot up here looks like it's a half yard short. Finishing that thought, Scott, every week it seems like we're talking about more and more and more different players being rotated on that defensive front. We were told all offseason long is it will be a first down thanks to a good spot. About the depth would be a big, big factor up front. A good spot? That, we're going to have to go a little better on the adjective. That was an uh, outstanding spot from Southeastern. Yeah, that would be nice. First and 10 at the 33-yard line. Ryan Taylor remains out there as the setback. He's offset to the right. Three receivers left. Looking that way as Hatley throws it out near side boundary. And a good throw on the outside shoulder. And it's hauled in by Blakely again for a game of seven to the 40 yard line. That's a nice catch by Blakely. Over straight over his head. Pulling that in with two hands. But the previous play, lucky the same it was the one that almost stopped that first line. As you mentioned, Todd, new players playing the play. 17 6, Oklahoma Baptist approaching five minutes to play here in the first half. Keep in mind OBU will get the football to start the second half and they have generated a lot of momentum from an offensive standpoint. They have scored on both of the drives in their all three of their drives in this contest. They'll throw it out right. They set up the screen for Blakely again. He has a first down across the 44 and out of bounds into the Savage Storm bench across the way at the 45. So he needed a three. He got five on that, and both teams working the play in a short intermediate passing game with a lot of success. Yeah, Lucky Lusain was a good play before. That time he was a little bit behind on that screen pass outside the bubble. 427 to play here with the first half. Clock is rolling. Beautiful homecoming night here on OBU's Shawnee campus. Bison trying to win their 15th consecutive against an Oklahoma school in the Great American Conference. From the 45, Dalton Hatley gets the snap, retreats inside the 40, throws out right, and the ball is income, or it's caught. Coming back to make the reception was Hunter Hawthorne, and he did so with the Bison 49, and that Kevin Scott, they were so close with Jay Jordan jumping that round. Exactly, Jay Jordan made an outstanding jump, and then he just hesitated. He tried to jump around, that's dangerous, and that's what allowed that completion. I think Jay Jordan did perfect. He jumped it. If he just went through it, he had a pick six. Six yards, first down, number three of this drive, and Southeastern trying to counter punch has moved into the Bison into the field of the 49-yard line. 3.36 to go here in the first half. It has been a good one as expected. Three receivers to the press box side. Tied in right. They give it straight ahead, and that is Ryan Taylor. And Ryan Taylor is going to get to the 45 of OVU. Yeah, it's going to be enough for the first down. Yeah, it will be. It was second down. I lost the count of the down market, so now it's first down to 10 at the OVU 45. You know, if you, if you tuned in in the last 15 minutes, you'd think that this has been totally dominated by, by OVU, but you have to remember, if you've just joined us on the way, they were down 6-0 in the opening seven minutes. First down and 10, Southeaster to the Oklahoma Baptist 45-yard line. Taylor is the single setback. Bison showing some pressure off the right side of the offensive formation. Here they come. Hatley with a pocket holding. Now is running out of time. Moves right. Still looking for somebody downfield. Hawthorne came back and made the catch, but he had his knee on the ground 39, so he was down without contact. 
but Hatley doing a good job there, Brooksy, just to keep that play alive. Well, he kept it alive. Uh, you know, there's a three-man rush, and somehow or other, he jumps in between three uh, green-shirted uh, bison going by him and was able to scramble out and, and get the little dump-off pass. Southeastern still moving with that wind to their back here for the third quarter, and we just have two minutes remaining before halftime, and the homecoming court will be announced here at Oklahoma Baptist at intermission. Second down and four. Savage storm of the 39, back to throw Hatley. Wide open near side as Kincaid again makes the catch inside the 35 and is hit and knocked down on the OBU sideline at the 30 yard line. Again, both teams exploiting the perimeter with the short to intermediate passing game. Nine yards on that reception for Kincaid. And it's now first down and 10. Southeastern still plenty of time as they have. Two timeouts left in a minute 40 with the wind to their back. Back to throw Hatley again, throws right. Hawthorne wide open. They're playing very soft, Brooks, in the closing green reset. As the receiver had at least a five-yard head start when that catch was made. Absolutely. He throws that ball before Hawthorne. Let's see, let's see what happens on this, uh, on this play. Let's see if they come up and bump a little bit. Second down to three after a seven-yard Hawthorne catch. He's been highlighted a lot for Southeast of this drive. A lot of scrimmage at the 23. Back to throw Hatley. Throws one up deep left, and it is caught. And out of bounds at the one-yard line is Marquise Gray. Well, that was an excellent catch because the coverage was pretty darn good right there. He was able to do a 360 and somehow haul it in at the one-yard line. Tell you what it was, Lucky Lasangi was the one that had the coverage. But that was a terrific throw by the Corpus New Mexico native Dalton Hatley. So just like that, here comes Southeaster. They'll put it down to the two, so it's first and goal to go from that point with 66 seconds to play here in the first half. And the clock is frozen with the reception out of bounds. The Andre Wheeler is in there along with the fullback. They'll toss it right to Wheeler. Behind right guard, he's in for the touchdown. Got a good block from the fullback that time, Caleb High. And then DeJounte Granger, the right guard, just cleared the way. And Wheeler reaches pay dirt for the ninth time. And all of a sudden, it is a 17-12 ball game. Let's see if Tyler Fenwick will go for two after they missed the single point after try. Following their first touchdown of the night, they keeps the offense out there. Wheeler, he just scored the touchdown. It's in the backfield. Triangle receiver set right, one left. They empty the backfield. Hatley to throw, looking over the middle, and the ball is incomplete, or was it caught? I think it, it was is, caught. It was caught. Yeah. He had his back to us here with the press Nobody, box. There was no that, signal from the officials. There wasn't, yeah. and they threw a flag. That's why I hesitated. So the try for two is good. And OBU's advantage now is 17. It was interference. To they're gonna, obviously, they're going to de decline it. They call it on Matthew Norman. So... 17 14 is a score. We'll put the top of these local messages on the Bison Radio Network. I'm Noble McIntyre. And I'm Jordan Klinger of McIntyre Law. The devastation of losing a loved one is impossible to measure. When it happens because of someone else's negligence, the grief can be overwhelming. Wrongful death cases are unique. Whether the cause was an automobile, semi, motorcycle, medical malpractice, or job-related accident, we can help. If you want to know more about your family's rights, call us. The consultation is free. We love what we do, and we're good at it. We are trial lawyers. Call McIntyre Law today. on the touchback, first down, 10, 60 seconds to play, lead by three. At 
Dalton Wheeler is tackled down one of the two for the Dalton Apple. Now the Bison Flatters are going to be in the 25, and now let's see what Chris Jetson and his offensive staff are going to do. has three timeouts going in the wind and 60 seconds with which to work. Empty set, two by three formation for Preston Hare. Harris motions to the near side of the jet sweep. They toss it to Keylon, trying to get outside, and he only manages to get to the 27. Well diagnosed for the Savage Storm, second down at eight, but he did get out of bounds, so that means that the clock will stop. Well, he's quick. Lee Hall, number 22, with a stop. 22. Well, Lee Hall, the junior from Athens, Texas, was the one that ushered him out of bounds. So it's second down and eight at the 27-yard line. Same formation, ball now on the right side, Hash. Preston Hare gets the snap back from Ryder Roberts. Here comes the pressure. Hare's going to run away from it. 35, and he slides down to 37-yard line. And OBU has to hurry. The clock will stop for the movement of the chains. It is a first down for OBU. Again at the 37-yard line. Preston Hare throws it out for Harris right flat. Keylon cannot get out of bounds. A great play by Jaylon Freeman who came up and tackles him for minus two on the reception. And now OBU will spend their first time out on the half with 34 seconds to play before the mission. Second down and 12 at the 37. Preston Hare has thrown for a score. Tyler Stevens has run for a score. And Garcia has a 25 yard field goal in the first half for all of the Bison scoring. Natalie has a two yard pass to Reyes to tie in. We have a two yard run. So both teams have been very, very good inside the other's red zone. Red zone defense coming in Oklahoma Baptist was 7th in the league. Southeastern was 11th. Thirty-four seconds to go. If those new ones can try and take something, a shot down the field still with two timeouts. They're going to have to clearly get inside the 20, I think, as far as the 15 in the win. Although Garcia has a strong leg, that win is really tough to kick in tonight. Second down at 12 of the 37. Bunch formation left, three receivers. Hare to throw, running out of time, dumps it off for Harris, and he juggles it and drops it to the 43. That is a point of emphasis this week by Chris Jensen. We have to make every play. If a ball hits you with the hands, either offensively or defensively, you have to make the play. And now it's third down and 12 at the 37. Yard. And the clock stops with 28 seconds to go before intermission. Stay with us. Coming up at halftime, it is the McIntyre Law first half review here on the Bison Network. Two receivers split short right, three wide left. Preston Hare gets the shotgun snap, drops to the 27, throws left, high throw. The ball is hot that time by Jai Moore. And Moore didn't get much as he's tackled at the 40-yard line because that throw was high. He manages to get three, and it is two now. They put the ball down at 39, so it's the fourth down at 10. The clock shows 19. Ken Roan, the Referee assigned by the Great American Conference has asked that they put two more seconds up on the clock, so now it reads 21 seconds. And this is a little bit dangerous situation. Southeastern does have a timeout remaining, but now Ethan McCaslin is going to be forced to punt into the wind. Last time we had wind conditions like this here in Shawnee was back to the Harding game, and he averaged 27.4 yards per punt. Cassett has had a good year punting, but it will be treacherous on punters in this facility. So on fourth down, so now they say the 39, it's fourth and eight. Ethan McCaffrey, the punt formation back at the 25. He's going to kick it away. Southeastern has the return game set up at the 29-yard line. Sky low. Here's the snap back. And McCasson boots it away, a line drive kick, and that's about as good as you can do. Lowe picks it up at the 27, returns it to the 30, and Lowe then is knocked down at the 35-yard line. 
So a pretty good punt. All things considered, McCaslin did exactly what he needed to do, and that was to keep it low. 17 seconds to go in the first half. OBU leads it 17 to 14 as Southeastern now will bring the offense back out. Now they put it down at the 33-yard line. So first and 10, 33 seconds, or first and 10 for the 33 with 14 seconds to play. Bison trying to take a cushion and advantage to the halftime locker room, and again, they will get the football to start the second half. Boy, Hatley, a much improved player at quarterback. Out of the gun, now line Shavers up for the backfield. And on a delay, they hand it to Shavers straight up the middle. 40, out of bank will tackle, and he spins and gets close to the first down. At the 42-yard line, the clock continuing to wind down. That will be the final play of the first half. Correction, Southeastern has spent their last timeout with one second to go. Hail Mary time. Yep, good decision. I was surprised they were going to take that time out to the locker room, Brooksy, because yeah. you have the wind to your back, so yeah, why not take exactly. a shot and hope for pass interference? Well, with this wind, <clears throat> he'll get it to the end zone. I think we can say that, don't you? I agree. Bison football brought to you in part by McIntyre Law. If you need an experienced award-winning personal injury attorney, call OBU alumnus Noble McIntyre and his team at McIntyre Law. Also by the First National Bank and Trust Company, they pride themselves on building relationships with neighbors and customers that last a lifetime. Visit their Shawnee location or check them out online at fnbokla.bank for more details. You can see on your screen if you're watching the video feed from obubison.com that Will Coleman, the safety is put back fairly deep. Also back there is Trajan Reyes and Felipe Alviar. Alviar again wearing his customary number 25 for the second straight game he wore last week down in Ada. Prior to that, he'd been wearing number zero. Shavers the single setback and Dalton Hatley to throw. He drops all the way to the 33. He's flushed for the pocket. Manages to get away from Carpet. Now he's going to run to the other side. And angles and bands. Take a crack downfield. We go to the halftime locker room. Oklahoma Baptist leading Southeastern 17 to 14. Go ahead, Scott. Got Greg Gothard down here. Coach, you're a little fired up there at the end, but a lot of confidence in your offense. Less than two minutes going into the stiff win, trying to get some points late before half. Yeah, we was, but I mean, you thin line between greed and, you know, I just mad because we should have not gave them the ball back. If we score, great, but you should not give them the football back in that scenario, and we did, and so that's why I was fired up at the end at our cell phone offense. How about the design on the uh, Wildcat? Every time you have some guy in motion and it takes a linebacker, somebody moves with them, it seems like you guys are a high percentage scoring off that Wildcat play. To be honest with you, we just call it and the kids just run where he wants. No, I'm just kidding. We, we, it's just kind of a, a, a entity of its own. The kids doing a good job buying it. It's fun, and we just try to tweak it just a little bit each week. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Greg Goff, an offensive player in University with Scott Wanis. She's not a better guy in football. I'm telling you. Yeah, he's so Greg funny. Goff, he's he's so down to earth. 17-14, Oklahoma Baptist at halftime. The first half review is presented by McIntyre Law. Let's go up next for the Bison Football Radio Network.
McIntyre. McIntyre Law first half review. Oklahoma Baptist enjoys a 17-14 lead over 6-1 Southeastern here on homecoming evening. Both teams have matched 13 play drives. Southeastern started the game in went 7 minutes and 52 seconds. OBU's 13 play drive went 5 minutes and 20 seconds and it was capped by Tyler Stever's two yard touchdown run. Both teams have been good in the red zone. Southeastern's two touchdowns, a Hatley to Reyes two-yard touchdown pass on the opening drive of the ball game. The extra point was missed. OBU's uh, touchdowns have been a two-yard run out of the Wildcat by Tyler Stever and an eight-yard Josh Cordell touchdown reception on a pass from Preston Hare, the 98th time that Preston has thrown for a touchdown in his OBU career. The Bison have added a Guillermo Garcia, 25-yard field goal, and the other Southeastern score was a two-yard rush cap at a 12-play, 77-yard drive. It's 6-14. That was the final play of the half, and it was uh, Marquise Gray hauling in the two-point conversion from Hatley to pull us to where we are at halftime, 17-14. Preston Hare with the first half, 13 of 17, 92 yards against the vaunted Savage Storm passing defense, which came in second of the conference, allowing a sub-170 yards per game for the opponents. Preston, however, has now thrown a touchdown pass in 23 straight games, 38 of 41 in his career here on Bison Hill, and now has number 98 as a member of the Bison football program. At halftime of the Noble McIntyre, McIntyre Law first half review, 17 to 14, the good guys over Southeastern. Brooksy's back with another first half recap in a moment on the OBU Football Radio Network. was expected from Southeastern, 195 yards at halftime. OBU with the lead, but about 60 yards underneath that on total. It's been tough to run, 14 snaps. You've tried to run the football, and the Bison have been able to net only 40 yards, and 29 of those yards have come from quarterback Preston Hare. And in all but one of those situations, they came on design quarterback draws. Passing, 92 yards for uh, the Bison. Total offense, 132. Individually, as I said, OBU with Preston Hare, five carries for 29. It has been very, very, had another very tough for Tyler Stever. He's at six carries, and he has nine yards. And Reuben Thompson, his cohort back there, Scoot, he has carried three times for a total of eight. It has been tough on the ground and probably will be in the second half also. On the southeastern side, C.J. Shavers has had a much better opportunity. He's carried eight times, averaged six and a half yards a carry, has 51 net yards. DeAndre Wheeler has 21. And Dalton Hetley at quarterback is 14 of 17 for 96 yards and a touchdown. Flipping back over to Preston here for a moment, 13 of 17, 92 yards and the eight-yard touchdown pass to Cornell. In the receiving department, Cottrell Blakely, five catches for 27 yards, top Southeastern. And Tyler Stever, actually, on little swing passes into the flat, he's the leading receiver. He's been targeted twice, hit twice, total of uh, 33 yards. Josh Cornell has uh, two catches for 16. One of those, of course, the touchdown throw. Keelan Harris has been targeted five times, has caught three for only six yards. 
Julian Clark, one catch for 15. You start hearing all of these statistics and all of the limitation, both on the ground and through the air for OBU, and on the other side, too, for Southeastern. But you realize that while you've got two teams that have been very high scoring this year, this has been a game that has come down in the first half basically to some really good defensive play on both sides of the ball. Ethan McKesson, one punt for 36 yards for OBU. Jackson Nally, one punt for 27 on the other side. Top tacklers, Freeman with five for Southeastern, and uh, no surprise here, Josh Arnold with five, but Tyler King on the corner has been busy. He's got five also. We'll take a look around the Great American Conference when we return on the McIntyre Law Halftime Review. OBU in front, 17-14 to 14 on the Bison Radio Network. for the lead in the Great American Conference, Harding, Henderson State, Washita, and tonight's opponent for the Bison, Southeastern Oklahoma State. Well, the other three from Arkansas all took care of business. For Harding and Washita, it was pretty easy. Harding just rolling over at home against Arkansas and Monticello, 51 to 7, and Washita having a breeze at home against Southern Arkansas, 42 to 7. But it was Henderson State that had the eyebrows up again. Arkansas Tech had that late score to stun Oklahoma Baptist two weeks ago, and they almost stunned them at home. Hunters Anderson State today. It went to overtime, and in a double overtime, after it was tied 35 35. At the end of regulation, each team got a field goal in the first overtime. Henderson State gets a three-pointer in the second overtime, and they squeak by at Arkansas Tech, 41 to 38. East Central on the road, a winner at Southwestern, 44 to 34. That keeps the Bulldogs without a win this year, and now they are the only team that has a notch over in the win column as they are buried at the bottom of the standings at 0 and 8. Southern Nazarene was on the road at Northwestern. Southern Nazarene with a big surprise. Well, not a big surprise, a modest surprise in a win against Southwestern a week ago Thursday had their first win. But now Northwestern and Oklahoma, excuse me, and Southern Nazarene are now tied for next to last in the league with records at one and seven as uh, it was a victory today for Northwestern at home in Alva, 47 to 27 
over Southern Nazarene. So the standings look this way. Harding, Henderson State, and Washita all at 7-1. Southeastern, of course, a half a game back with the second half of this game still ahead. With a 5-3 record is East Central. Oklahoma Baptist at 4-3. Arkansas Monticello at 4-4. Four four. Southern Arkansas 3-5. Arkansas Tech is at 2-6. And, and in Southern Nazarene and Northwestern State at 1-7. And, and Southwestern still without a win at 0-8. That's a look around the Great American Conference. We continue in just a moment with our halftime report. It is homecoming evening here at Bison Hill, and the Bison, after trailing six to nothing early, got the lead up to 17 to six. They've gone to halftime, settled with a three-point lead at 17 to 14, and looking for the football in their hands on the kickoff when they return. We've got more on the halftime show, the halftime McIntyre review when we return on the Bison Radio Network. After these local messages.
Rodriguez. It was 10 to 6. The lead ex expanded uh, uh, to 17 to 6 on the ensuing kickoff after that Stever goal. A high kick into the wind, unable to be fielded. The ball was loose. It was recovered by uh, Matt Corman and. With that recovery, it set uh, the Bison up inside the 20-yard line, and they needed four plays to go 19 yards in a minute and 14 seconds. It was an eight-yard pass to Josh Cornell from Hare. The extra point, Rod Rodriguez, it was 17 to six, and then with a minute to play in the half, capping a 12-play 77-yard drive of just over six minutes, Wheeler with a two-yard rush, the extra point good for Southeastern, <clears throat> 17 to 14 at halftime. All right, we'll go back to the scoreboard just a moment before we take our uh, final break here on the McIntyre Review. We do have an update now. We gave you a Harding score. There was nothing that made any difference. It was a route, but uh, at one time we thought it was 57 to 7. Harding actually uh, bombed Arkansas Monticello at 64 to 7. Uh, East Central 44 to 34 was the final over Southwestern. Washita 42 to 7 over Southern Arkansas. And uh, as we told you, in a double overtime win, Henderson State stays among the top at 7 and 1 in the league, squeaking out a 41 to 38 win at Arkansas Tech. And the final at Northwestern today, uh, Alva is jumping and they're dancing in the streets in Todd's old hometown because the boys down the hill got their first win of the year, Northwestern 47, Southern Nazarene 27. That's our scoreboard. Uh, both teams making their way back out onto the field. We're getting close to the start of the second half. Stay with us. Todd will be back along with Scott in a moment on the OBU Football Network. At Crane Family Stadium at the Hurt Athletic Complex, OBU at one point leads 17 to 6. They lead by three at halftime and almost ready to start the second half as we always do. We visit with Brandon Morris, defensive coordinator of OBU, who's with Scott Wanish. Hey, Coach, your, one of your cornerbacks, Matthew Norman, made an outstanding play on that short kickoff to dive, not only to recover that kick, but to stay inbounds, what an athletic play. Most definitely. He's a great athlete. Great energy guy as well, man. I'm proud of him. I'm glad he I'm glad he came up with that football. It helped us out quite a bit. Your defense seems to improve and improve over the years, like at East Central last week. You gave up short fields. They had, kept them to a field goal. Uh, Jay Jordan almost stepped in front on the far side of the field for a pick six. Maybe one big more play from your defense. Yes, sir, uh, this is a very good offense, man. They Obviously, they're, they're you know, they're 8-1. They're we just got to stay at it, stay active in the rush game, make sure we secure the flats a little bit and make them earn everything they get. You know, I'm proud of the way our guys are fighting. We've got, we got to keep fighting. Let's get the win, Coach. Yes, sir. Let's keep. Brandon Morris continuing to do a great job with the Bison defense since he was ascended to the role of defensive coordinator a few years ago. Hey, OBU fans, located less than five minutes from OBU, Hampton Inn Shawnee offers free breakfast and exclusive OBU visitors discounts. Call and reserve your room today for 15% off your next stay. Well, John, a little bit of a decision time. If you are the Bison, you have the option. Do you take the win of the third, give Southeaster the football, or do you take the ball and get the win of the fourth? I think the latter is probably what the Bison will do. Well, you've already made the decision then. What you ask? I'm asking for? your question. What would you do? I'd, 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 I'd probably want it. I mean, let's face it. You want it at the end when, when everything's on the line. Yeah, without question. Yeah. Hey, can I say something? Yeah. When in Shawnee, 
Make Theopolis Social Club your destination before or after the game. They are a brasserie-style restaurant in the heart of Shawnee's historic depot district where food and culture collide in a modern, eclectic space. Theopolis is a neighborhood restaurant that makes all of their food from scratch using as many local ingredients as possible. They also have ample outdoor seating and the best live music in the area. You can book online at theopolissc.com or call 405-788-4404. Make your reservation today. Take a look at them. We're going to do it before the season's over. I'm telling you what, good chance. The rumor mill is that uh, the Bison Radio crew will be on hand at Theopolis <laughs> Social Club after the next home game two weeks from today against nationally ranked Henderson State. That's just a rumor. No confirmation of it <laughs> I yet. I got you. Incidentally, thanks to Theopolis uh, for coming aboard to yeah, support Bison Athletics. Yeah. And they also uh, came to the homecoming touchdown gathering today as well. Right. So, so thanks to Theopolis. Check them out in downtown Shawnee. Bison will get the football. And, 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 and it was just the opposite of what we said. They will have the wind <laughs> as well. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. So this is a uh, very. Must be why I'm up here and somebody's coaching's down there, right? You're right. Yeah. That, John, I think really makes this third quarter that much more important for OB. Well, of course it does. Yeah. yeah. Keelan Harris, Jai Moore back to receive the kick from Nally. <laughs> Nally looks right, points left, here, and we are underway here in the second half from Shawnee. Second half brought to you by Noble McIntyre, McIntyre Law. This one will go out of bounds, and a mistake there, kicking into the wind by the freshman place kicker from Wiley, Texas. Hey, Keon Harris, who likes to return kicks, he had a chance to field that at the 12. You don't think he wasn't smart? He knew that ball was going to hit and bounce out of bounds. Why take a chance? Because now, with the ball out of bounds, that baby's setting up there at the 35-yard line. Brooksy, how impressed were you with Key? I know you've interviewed him, but you no, heard him at the yeah. pregame show yeah, as well. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I yes, know. sir. He's a good kid. Really First good. and 10 of the 35-yard line. Josh Cordell with a touchdown reception, the only one on the board tonight for OBU. Flanked short left, three receivers, including Key, is wide right. And Steber, who is 12 yards away from 2,000 in his career on the ground, gets the first handoff of the second half, and Steber runs right into Cameron Tate and is spun down at the 37, so he gets two. And that will bring up second down. So just in the way here in the third quarter, that wind is still starching the flags off to the north end at better than 20, up to 25, 27 miles per hour. It is at the back of Oklahoma Baptist as they move from right to left here in the uh, third quarter. Second down today. Twins split both ways. They hand it again to Steber and nowhere to go. I tell you, there's no place for him to go. On that snap, he was Vegas. He had seven snaps for 11 yards. He loses a yard here. Third down coming up in nine, and Stever just simply cannot get, go any place. Roderick Kirby, number 94, was the one he ran into, and now it is third down and nine back at the 36-yard line. Big play here, early second half. Hare drops to the 27, throws right, has a receiver open at Stever out of the backfield. He turns up the field, and he got to the first down marker at the 45-yard line. That is some tough running, and having a presence of mind is the way you need it to get for that first down. Great job by Tyler Stever. How about J.T. Bogner on the right side of the line? Kept that pocket out, kept the defender out, giving Hare plenty of time to complete that pass. I mean, when you say first down, the nose of the football barely touches that 35, 45-yard line. Guys, I don't think it's any shocker. OB's played well up front the last two weeks with the return of J.T. Vonger. And off goes to Stever again. He runs right into another defender. I believe that was Scooter Baker. He's one of the leading tacklers, but he manages nearly four yards on first down. Maybe you can tip right now to go to work on the ground with a limited back at 13 13 to play in the third quarter. For Southeastern, they're pulling everybody up on first down. It's a good opportunity to pass on first down, especially if it's a bunch of back. I think you're right. I think Daniel Keaton is setting Southeastern up for something big here in the middle. Second down and six at the 49-yard line. Trips to the near side, including Harris and Cordell. Now it's a quarterback run as Hare tiptoes to the 49-yard line of Southeastern. He manages two, and he's pushed back all the way back to his 46-yard line. It's going to bring up third down and four. In the first half, Oklahoma Baptist on third down conversions was three of five. 
Actually, that's a nice uh, design play, but you had man-to-man -man on Keelan Harris and Josh Cornell with the wind to your back. A lot of room on this side of the field, but they used Tyler Stever as the power, the blocker, and the fullback on the fake handoff. Stever empties the backfield as he comes to the near side. Preston Hare over the middle for Harris, and he makes the catch. And he had a defender draped on his back that time. It was Kaleem Baldwin in a perfectly thrown football again like QB1. And a nice play design. Tyler Stever coming out left. Southeastern always worried about Stever going out there. That makes uh, Harris go the opposite way. First down, number 12 tonight for OBU. Hare airs it out left, and Garner had his jersey being grabbed, but the ball was ruled uncatchable. And Micah Rogers, who's a backup out there in the secondary, was the one that was tucking at his green jersey. Not only was he tugging at his jersey, it looked like they're walking hand in hand. <laughs> <laughs> he just grabbed the right hand. And Shea Garner was just shaking and holding it. Second down and 10 from the 45-yard line of Southeastern. Early second half, 17-14 Bison. Hare fakes the handoff, throws left. Harris makes the catch at the 40, and down he goes immediately again. Rogers was the one who made the catch in front of And Harris right now was out his one-on-one -on -one battle with the junior from Mesquite, Texas, Mike Rogers. He's trying to the defenders right there. Perfect throw by Harris. Third down and five. OBU with a wind to their back. Moving from south to north inside Crane Family Stadium at the Hurt Athletic Complex. Hair to throw. Drops. Throws left. Ball incomplete. He was looking for Josh Cornell. And stepping in front with the intended target was Baldwin that time. So now a decision for Chris Jensen. It's fourth down. I don't think there's a decision, Todd. I think they knew the second that ball sailed out of bounds. They're going to go for it. Bison of the first half on fourth down tries did not attempt one. For the season, Oklahoma Baptist is fifth in the conference out of 12 teams, 5 for 12, 42% against the league's most stingy or one of their most stingy defenses on fourth downs to convert against Southeastern, allowing 47%. Bison need to get to the 35. They empty the backfield. Hare to throw. Running out of time. Running right. Buys time. Flag is down. Catch is made to throw to the That's a 33, but we have to lose the flag, and it's thrown right in the vicinity of a ball. A hold. It is a hold. And it may be against the big Alaska, Jake Foshi, who was looking backwards with his hands on his hip. That's probably going to get your uh, punt team out. Yep. Coach Malo is... Huddling with them here on the near sideline, I would expect the yeah, McKisson is there. But this penalty is no longer any decision to be made. This will be a punt coming. Bison, only their third flag. They had two for seven yards of the first half. They are quietly on pace to break a record for fewest penalties of the season back in 2019. That flag was against Ryder Roberts, not Foshi. That's their 31st flag of the year. They were flagged only 59 times back in 2019, the fewest penalties against the Bison team in school history. There are 28 penalties and 42 yards in penalty yardage per ball game, second only to Harding, who was in the top five in NCAA Division II ca in uh, that category. Well, it will be a record if they stay on that uh, uh, four penalty a game uh, average, that's for sure. Fourth down and 15. They took a look at it, and now Ethan McCasson will have a chance to punt. For the first time tonight, into the wind. He had a good one late in the first half, a line drive kick into the teeth of that wind that went 36 yards. McCasson has had a great year, averaging almost 38 in his prior 26 punts. He waits the snap back from Russell. It's on the mark, and he gets a leg into it, and this one will easily sail into the end zone, uh, and it hits and goes through the back, so it'll be a touchback as the ball comes out to the 25. And McKisson is really, really angry with himself. Uh, the body language showed it as soon as he kicked it. He realized that he had nailed that baby right away for the money he needed. And again, uh, a little tough to judge that uh, what, 25 to 30 mile an hour wind. It is very strong. I'm surprised that was kind of toward the center of the field, not yeah. far from the left half. Needed to be closer to the top. First to 10 after 20, I said it's 25. So we get a timeout on the field. Second half brought to you by Noble McIntyre with Ross for these messages on the Bison Radio Network. Visit Lowe's today, your one stop shop for DIY projects and all home improvement needs. Call in at 17 North Kickapoo. 
All right, fans, I hope you've been on your feet. It's time to announce the Triple A Most Spirited Row. The Most Spirited Row in the second quarter goes to Section 1, Row 11. Section 1, Row 11. Congratulations. Going home with free Chick fil A for the Caesar Shiny Location. Blakely turns it into a gain of nine to the 29, so it's first or second down and a yard with 10.35 and Kenny to play here in the third quarter. Todd Miller, Scott Wattis, John Brooks with you tonight statewide on the OBU Football Network. Tied in this right, two receivers this way. The tight end, Perini, starts to motion, now comes back right. They fake the handoff. Hatley strands tall and guns it over the middle of the ball. is caught by Deuce Pittman on a sliding catch at the 41-yard line. They needed one, and he picks up a dozen on Pittman's second catch. Nice throw by Hatley, just standing there in the pocket. He had his eyes on him the whole time, threw it down low in the zone area where only the receiver could catch it. Dalton Hatley came in, only intercepted four times, 16 touchdown passes, completing 65% of his passes for the year. He's 14 of 17 in the first half. Another first down for Southeastern. That's the 15th of the night. It comes at their own 41-yard line, deep moving into that breeze. Two receivers left and right. Hatley again throws it out left. Wide open again is Kincaid, and he tiptoes out of bounds as they will put the ball down to the 47-yard line. That is a gain of six. Guys, I don't know what the deal is, but Elisa playing very, very soft on the edges. Just way too much cushion by right quarterback Tyler King. And then especially into the wind. You can cheat up here. You've got to think what your advantage is here. You can kind of outrun in the Football will come back to you. You can cheat up here when they're going into the wind. Clock winding, 9-12 to play in the third, 17-14 Bison before a large homecoming crowd. Tied in, Jacob Reyes, who has a touchdown, starts to motion, hands it off now to Shavers, picks his way through traffic and stretches out for a first down to the 48-yard line of OBU. And it looked like Shavers the low guy, C.J. Shavers, was going nowhere. Yep. Oklahoma Baptist is very good at the point of attack. He's slowing it down. And then, like you said, Shavers picking his way through. There's no tackling coming from behind. Shavers with that carry now has rushed 10 times for 51 yards. He's had a big night. Key rushes among those 51 yards. First and 10 into Bison territory at the 48. Trips wide right. Hatley looks that way. Throws out. Ball caught. That is Blakely. They finally spit him down. Is coming up from the secondary. Jay Jordan will roll him down to the 41. That's going to be about three yards short of the yardage to gain. Second and short. And boy, that's been key tonight. OBU is not winning defensively first down against the Savage Storm offense. No penetration. A lot of it has to do with Southeastern sometimes throwing a little short pass on first down to give them a good uh, choice. He was on the pass here on second and three. 8 one and counting to play third quarter. Neither team has scored. OBU has punted it away on their first possession. Southeastern with their first offensive possession since halftime. They've moved for their own 20 up field of the Bison 41. Perini now is in there at tight end. They hand it off to Shavers. First down right up the middle. And he is finally spun down by Trajan Lands at the 35-yard line. But a gain of six. And again, that much improved offensive line controlling things for Southeastern. As I was told about their offensive linemen, we got rid of the guys that couldn't block and bought more in the could. Well, that's a good coaching decision from one and ten to six and one. Now, Nick Boone, who's been very active for Oklahoma Baptist all year long, he was on the bottom of that pile. I'm seeing OBU, a lot of guys getting laid down. I don't know if they're pancake blocks or just trying to stuff the run. 7-14 and County to play third quarter. Boy, this thing has been a cleanly played football game tonight and quickly played. From the 35 of Oklahoma Baptist, Hatley gets the uh, snap, throws it out left. Likely was him in that three of the defender. That's Tyler King in the backfield. Manages to get back there on the scrimmage. And no further. King got to the tackle, but he had to score up the play. 
But you know, there, Tyler King actually was cheating up this time. We were worried about him playing too south. He was right on the line of scrimmage. Southeastern has about as good a receiving core as there is top to bottom of the Great American Conference. In fact, these two may have the two best receiving cores in the league. Second and 10 to the 35-yard line. I'm talking about depth. Three receivers to the near side, two wide left, including the tight end. Hatley throws it out right side for Shavers behind the line. Turns up field 30, cuts left to the 25-yard line. And down he goes. Josh Cross, the senior from Collinsville, finally running him down along with Felipe Alvear. Another swing pass, another double-digit gain, and another first down for Southeastern. I think that was Josh Arnold's responsibility. He's the linebacker on this side of the field, and the running back comes out uncovered to the right side. This, guys, is an impressive drive. Another one. This is the ninth play of the drive. They already have scored on a 13-play drive in their first possession of the first half. The drive exactly five minutes plus old now, and they move for their own 20 upfield to the Oklahoma Baptist 25, and the Savage Storm have yet to go to third down of this possession. Stacks, two tight ends right, two receivers wide left. Out there is DeAndre Wheeler. He blocks. They throw it out left again. Wide open is Deuce Pittman. He'll make the catch, and Pittman gets down to the 19-yard line of OBU. It's entirely too easy. Well, the Southeastern's doing a good job with their play design as well. Some of Two receivers deep to the end zone, but King is going with those guys that aren't on the sideline, and he's got contain out there on the left corner of the offense. Bison have narrowly had the football, guys, when they've had the win to their back. They didn't have it much in the first quarter. They've only had it one possession, and now Southeastern has it at fourth or at uh, second down and four at the 19 and the clock rolling towards five minutes to play here in the third quarter 17 14 dice over the six and one savage score wheeler in the backfield they show blitz off the quarter they hand it off to wheeler running left first down that's about all he got as he tiptoes his way towards the 15 yard line that's where he needed to get to refresh the down marker Saving that first down. It's just shy of the 15, so it's going to be third and less than a yard. With 4.39 to play in the, in the third quarter. Southeastern very, very content to take their time running the play clock deep, going into the teeth of that breeze. They will have the wind to their back over the final 15 minutes of this one. We keep talking about it, but it is a big, big factor in this ball game. Two tights on a short yardage situation, and as they to uh, tossed a Wheeler OBU, didn't like what they saw, and they will call a timeout. Timeout on the field, 421 to play, third quarter. Southeastern is threatening Oklahoma Baptist with a three point advantage, 17 to 14. The third quarter brought to you by McIntyre Law on the Bison Network. 3,230. I'm Noble McIntyre. And I'm Jordan Klinger of McIntyre Law. The devastation of losing a loved one is impossible to measure. When it happens because of someone else's negligence, the grief can be overwhelming. Wrongful death cases are unique. Whether the cause was an automobile, semi, motorcycle, medical malpractice, or job-related accident, we can help. If you want to know more about your family's rights, call us. The consultation is free. We love what we do, and we're good at it. We are trial lawyers. Call McIntyre Law today. I tell you, Philippe Aviar might have saved the touchdown. Right that almost looked right like he was going to break free. So. 3.55 and Kenny to go. First and goal to go. Southeast of the ball rests at the Oklahoma Baptist 8-yard line. Southeastern trying to retake the lead. They led 6-0, 6-3. Over you then led 17-6. Before a touchdown late in the first half of the Savage Storm, pulled them within three. 
Atley out of the gun. Motions him in. Reyes to the far side. That's the tight end. Now he starts back right. They fake the handoff, throw it over the middle of the ball. Incomplete at the goal line. It looked like it was in the hands of Pittman and may have been broken up by OBU. I don't think there's any may about it. I think he did break it up. I think Pittman thought he had it. Did, I don't think he nestled it in to his chest and got it. How about you? Will, Will Coleman came across at the same time Tyler King was there, so one of those two Bison got their hand in the cookie jar. You know how sometimes you think you've got something and maybe you just relax for a split second. It just looked like he just took a little bit of a pull off of it. Official stoppage of play. It'll be second down and goal to go at the eight. You'd love it if you're Oklahoma Baptist to keep this a tie game and hold them to three right here. The First National Bank and Trust Company is our team is committed to serving yours. Visit our Shawnee branch to find out more about our products and services or check us out online at fnbokla.bank. That's the First National Bank and Trust Company, your bank for life. Vice and Sports Network. Welcomes the Theopolis Social Club to our broadcast, both for the remainder of the football season and into basketball here in 21-22. Second down and goal to go. Tied in left. The tailback is DeAndre Wheeler. They hand it to Wheeler. He bounces out left. It's a foot race. Diving for the pylon. Did he get in? Yes, he did. Touchdown, Southeastern. Now the linebackers for Oklahoma Baptist, the outside linebacker has contained on that running back. No, no, everybody was no up the middle of the field. There. No, everybody no. went up the field and the back just kicked out left. Southeastern retakes the lead 20 to 17. And we will see Trey Keats on for the extra point. The junior from Kingston who played two years in Miami at NEO Junior College. Missed his first point after trying to not only his second miss in 30 attempts this season. Out of the hold of Russell Riley at the south end. Snap back. Ball is down. Kick is on the way. And the extra point is good. 3.24 to play. Third quarter. Southeastern Oklahoma State 21. Oklahoma Baptist 17. We'll step aside for these local messages on the OBU Football Radio Network. Estate planning is a crucial step in protecting your family's future. With an estate plan, you can decide how to distribute your assets, make healthcare decisions, and support ministries after you pass away. It involves some pretty big decisions, but with guidance from Water's Edge, you can plan for your children's future, give to kingdom causes, and get expert help along the way. Build a solid foundation for your family. Start your estate plan today. Visit watersedgeservices.org. You only have the win left for 324. This is a drive that will challenge your manhood. That's right. Now, there's no doubt Oklahoma Baptist is talented enough to score into the win, but why squander those opportunities? Uh, Keelan Harris, Josh Cornell, man-to-man -man all day long going deep. Harris will return this one from the 10. Inside the left hash mark to the 20 and up to the 25-yard line, and they'll knock him at the 26 to the turf. A 16-yard return for Keelan Harris. And here comes the GOAT, Preston Hare. One of the greatest to play the position in the history of the conference. And now he finds himself in a four-point hole with only 18 minutes and 18 seconds to go in the ball game. Preston Hare takes a drop, throws it left. Harris is... Ushered out of bounds by Keyshawn Somerville. And the reception will go for five to the 31. Right there, Southeastern was favoring where Harris was because they had three guys coming there, but they're worried about him getting deep. So he 
Stevens who got that five-yard catch. Three receivers wide to the far side. That's Clark, that's Garner, and that's Harris. Into the slot to the near side is Josh Cordell. Second and five. Harris throws out left. Or Hare throws out left, and he's got Stevens. And Tyler is out of bounds near the 34. He's two yards short, so it's third down and two. I have to ask you, with the win, are you surprised they're not taking deep shots? And especially with the town. You talk about the goat, the greatest of all time, the quarterback, strong arm, great wide receivers. Uh, there's going to there's gonna have to be a shot here pretty soon. Braden Phipps is coming to the lineup. He's one of three receivers deployed to the right side on second down and five. Throw over the middle. Garner has the catch of the senior from Sky to attack him immediately after a first down catch to the 41 or 40 yard line. Micah Rogers was in coverage and made the tackle. You're talking about on the pregame show with uh, Coach Scott uh, saying if we get our hands on the ball both sides, we've got to take care of it. That was a case right there. Shea Garner took a bullet right there and he was able to pull it down. Good point, Brooksy. 209 to play third quarter. Bison trying to get a drive put together as they trail by four. Throw out left. Put out with a reception of the 45. Darts to the 48 yard line of Southeastern. Another first down catch as Somerville made the tackle. Well, you just see the confidence of Preston here, there, don't you, Scotty? He had Steve for a little pass in the fight if he wanted, and there was coverage on Cornell. He rifled that thing in there. 145 and Kennedy to go with the third. OBU in an up-tempo offense. Works with a one-back set. Hare looking deep. Throws over the middle for Keelon Harris. He's got him at the 10. And he's in for the touchdown. Holy Toledo, Keelon Harris with another touchdown reception. This is game number eight. Game number seven with at least one. Drop to the end zone for the sophomore. And there's the shot we've been waiting for all game with the win. Josh Malumba, the defensive back, has no chance to cover the talented Keelan Harris, man to man. Harris goes up the left side, takes double move to the post, perfectly thrown pass by Harris. Ask, and you shall receive. 13th touchdown reception in not two years for Harris. Here is Garcia's point after try. It's on the way, and it is good. 1.35 to play in the third quarter. There's your answer, boys. 24-21 Oklahoma Baptist for Keelon Harris's 10th touchdown reception of his sophomore season. And again, he has caught at least one touchdown in every game but one this season. And I talked to Keelon Harris at halftime. He came out of the locker room. I said, you slipped a little bit on that one where Harris ran. He goes, yes, I'm really upset with myself. He juked the guy. Back on the left side of the end zone, the wind blowing. He said the wind was messing with the ball, and I just got my feet tangled up. Nice and football. There, there weren't any feet tangled up there, were there? How about the separation? Oh, you really? Yeah. Nice and football brought to you by ShopOverUBison.com. Show you that correct thing. Help OBU Athletics. ShopOverUBison.com. Open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Here's a big kickoff for Guillermo Garcia, looking for his third touchback of the night. That was a mystery last week to Chris. He told me earlier in the week when we got together, he said, you know, usually Garcia is good about putting things into the end zone, but last week he never did get one into the end zone. So he'll try for his third touchback of the night right here, and he should do it. He will approach from 10 yards. So be you up by three, and here's the kickoff. Angling to the near side, that will go out of bounds as it hits at the north end zone back line in southeastern with 135 to go here in the third quarter has the wind into their face but all of a sudden the bison really seem to have been administered a injection of momentum oh big time momentum and that was huge there's just like three minutes and 35 seconds uh, left in the third quarter when OB got that win. We have a flag on this one. There was some giant at the end yeah. of the kickoff. Southeastern already has two 15-yard penalties tonight. Let's see if this is against them Here again. We go. Here is Ron Rowe. It is. It's against Southeastern and Jacob Leas at the end of the kickoff. Southeastern, 10th in the conference, averaging almost 79 yards in penalties. Has now three major for 15 yards in tonight's game. And the ball will rest back at the 12-yard line. That is a huge, huge break for OBU's defense. Let's put our ears back and make something happen right here. You know, when you dissect this game, if I'm on the coaching staff of Southeastern State, 
I might be having some real heart-to-heart -heart talks with some people. They lose this game, and it goes back to instances like this. I mean, every one of those has been costly. Preston Hare has now thrown multiple touchdown passes in 30 of his last 38 ball games. Coming off a career matching six touchdown explosion last week in Ada. Hatley out of the gun. Has a one back set. Fakes the handoff. Dances behind the line of scrimmage. Has plenty of time. Now he'll take off. Hatley to the 15 and a spun down at the 13 yard line. Josh Arnold was the one that finally ran him down. And pretty good containment that time by the Bison. It was good containment, but somebody's got to get to the quarterback. They've got to get off the blocks. And somebody's got to get close to the quarterback. Am I correct? That was number 99 for Preston? Yes. Okay. Line of scrimmage at the 18. So that brings up second down and four. Pretty nice scamper by Dalton Hatley. But a good job of pass blocking by the southeastern front. Second down and short. Hatley. One of the hand it off to Taylor. The ball's on the turf. Let's see who has it. Hatley has a chance to get it. No use recovered. The Bison have recovered a loose football. Jackson Turner was the one that picked it up for over you. Ryan Taylor thought he was not going to get the handoff. Instead, Hatley then had it hit his hands and dropped to the turf for a huge break on turn over number two forced by the bison. And when that ball jumped to the turf, Jackson Turner just out-muscled Hatley for that football. Yeah, he question. dove down, yeah. got there. Hatley had his hands on it. Turner had two hands on it. Turner pulled it up underneath his chest for the fumble recovery. First down and 10 in the red zone. OBU at the southeastern 12-yard line with 43 seconds to play here in the third quarter. Look at him or look for him to go to the end zone here. Hare drops back to the 21, looking left. He's got Harris. Touchdown, Oklahoma Baptist. He won Harris that time. <laughs> Beat Jalon Freeman. I say it every time, Todd, they cannot cover Keelon Harris man-to-man. -man. They had a different guy there, Freeman. Crossing pattern, keeps one foot inbounds. Perfect pass by Harris. It was perfect, Scott, because it was thrown to the boundary, which means even had Freeman been able to make a play on it, he was not going to be able to intercept it. Great throw, great route, great catch. Bison, quick strike after the turnover. Here is Garcia for the point after try. It's on the way, and it is... Good. 39 seconds to play, third quarter. Remember, I said your manhood was going to be challenged. It has been challenged, and the Bison have answered the bell as they take a 21-17 deficit and turn it into a 10-point lead with 39 seconds to go in the period. Two big turnovers in this game. The not pooch kick, but the kick, high kick into the wind that bounced in between everybody and was recovered by Corman. Four plays later, a touchdown. This one, the fumble by the quarterback. One play later, the touchdown. You've taken advantage of two turnovers deep in the opposition territory. Those 14 points, even I, with limited math in my lifetime, can tell you is the difference with a 31-21 lead. Congratulations to Preston Hare. He has joined Southeast or Southern Arkansas's Barrett Ritter and Henderson State's Kevin Rogers, the only three quarterbacks in league history to throw 100 or more touchdowns in their career. How about what Todd alluded to earlier, like that call, going for the throw right after the turnover. Exactly. I love that aggressive call. You've got the momentum. Huge out-muscle fumble recovery by, recovery by Jackson Turner, and then going for the throw on first down. Here with a dart to Keelon Harris. Southeastern has sputtered at times in the third quarter this year, and it has bit them in the rear end here late in the third. After they gave up a five-play scoring drive and then a turnover two plays later. OBU is answered, and they lead it by 10, and Garcia will boot this one away from right to left. And it'll be a touchback first and 10 for Southeastern at the 25-yard line with 39 seconds to play here in the third quarter. And John pointed it out earlier, those, there's a big penalty before that on that, uh, on that fumble, and they've all been costly going deep in Southeastern's territory, making there, it easy yeah. for OBU. Yeah, there you go. I mean, the penalty... Uh, the turnover occurs after the penalty. 
you know, it's not good. The same thing's not going to happen. If the ball is up there, you're going to call a different play. Whatever. It doesn't make any difference. Even if you fumble at that point, you're 15 yards back upfield. You're not sitting on the, go- on the you know, near the goal line. Preston, one of the note, 27 touchdown passes his senior year. The Trophy Club Texas native leads the conference in that category. Hatley now plays from behind 10. He'll turn. He'll hand it off to Shaver, breaking tackles, running left outside the 30 and down to the 33-yard line. And if the Savage Storm so choose, that could be the final play here in the third quarter. Yeah, the Bison have to get off some of those blocks. Talk to Brandon Morris at halftime, some of the interview that you don't hear on the field while it's on commercial. He said, we have got to be better on first down. Quit giving big chunks to the Savage Storm on first. Southeastern may not snap it again. We're under 10 seconds to play here in the third, and they will have the wind in the fourth as we will flip-flop ends of the field. 15 minutes to go for 15 straight against in-state competition. Bison 31, Southeastern Oklahoma State 21. This is OBU football presented by McIntyre Law on the OBU Radio Network. Family Stadium of the Herd Athletic Complex. It's second down and short. Hatley throws a slant over the middle. He's got Hawthorne, who's had a big night tonight. And Hunter Hawthorne on the slant is tackled to the 45-yard line of Oklahoma Baptist. That is his sixth target, fourth catch tonight. And it's a first down as the Savage Storm attack through the air. You knew that was going to be a pass. That's why Southeastern elected to run all that time off the clock and the shotgun on second down to turn with the wind to their back. 42 yards receiving now. 22 on that catch for Hunter Hawthorne. First play of the fourth quarter as Southeastern into OBU's into the field. Back to throw again is Hatley from his own 45. Pocket holes, he'll throw it deep, looking again for Hawthorne. And he was tied up that time with Will Coleman. And the ball sailed out of the reach anyway of Hawthorne. Second down coming up. A couple of plays back to the end of the third quarter. These are the stats. Total offense for Southeastern, 283 yards, 137 yards uh, on the ground, 146 passing. Great balance there. On the other side, OBU simply has not been able to run the ball. They've had 18 snaps and 47 carries, but they've been able to throw it. Uh, here is thrown it for 196 yards. Total offense, 243. Second down and 10 of the 45 of Oklahoma Baptist for Southeastern. Early fourth quarter. Hatley again will throw. Guns it over the middle of the ball. The ball too high, incomplete off the hand of Braxton Kincaid. Now it's third and 10. Interesting stat, updated numbers. Total offense, 305 now for Southeastern, 243 for OBU. And the Savage Storm with less than a 75-yard advantage in total offense despite owning possession of the football for more than 27 minutes and limiting OBU to just 17 minutes and 41 uh, seconds of possession time. Third and 10, the large homecoming crowd making noise. And before they snap the football, we get flags. And I think Nick Boone, who was trying to blitz off the left end of the offensive line, may have encroached. Let me ask you something. That, so two three quarters, if I told you that Tyler Stever and Reuben Thompson would have 22 yards on 12 carries and that uh, OBU would be ahead 31 to 21, would be, would be shaking your head and saying I was a little bit crazy? I wouldn't be surprised OBU was leading. I would have thought you were crazy if you had said it was a two-score lead. 
Fifth penalty or fourth penalty now, 22 yards as Boone was called for offsides tonight against OBU. Third down and five at the Bison 40-yard line. Trips lined up wide right, single receiver to the near side. Hatley drops again, throws, ball caught, first down. Cottrell Blakely at the first down marker, and then he spun down at the 33 of the Bison. He just sat down in that zone coverage that time, Scott, and Hatley just is effortless in his ability to throw the football. The Bison brought five guys that time, maybe six. And they get close to Hatley, but they're not getting to him. So that leaves man-to-man -man in that zone, or it's going to be a lot thinner coverage in the back. Blakely with the catch for seven yards. He now has been targeted nine times, has nine catches for 50 yards. Came in with three catches for six or 32 receptions for over 300 yards this season. Fresh set of downs for Southeastern. Early fourth quarter, Bison lead it by 10. Hatley to throw for the 40, being pressured, and he dumps it off incomplete. Lola Fia was able to get off the block that time, and now Robert is writhing down a little bit in pain at midfield. Correction, that's Peter Papula that was writhing in pain, but he is able to get up and stay on the field. It's going to be second down and 10. And, Scott, that was very, very close to being intentional grounding. Marquise Gray kind of came back and helped his quarterback to at least get in, quote, unquote, the vicinity. Yeah, because Robert Lolafia had his big right paw on the jersey of Dalton Hatley. He was bringing him to the ground and then just the chunk, and that ball did not go very far. 13-29 to play in the ball game. 31-21 Oklahoma Baptist trying to beat once beaten Southeastern. Perini starts to motion. Gibbs straight ahead to Shavers. Shavers, submarines down to the 29 of the Bison. A gain of four, third and six. Southeastern is one of one on third down tries here in the second half and three of six for 50% tonight. And that's exactly what the average against this year coming in. The Bison defense was on third down conversions by the opponents through seven games. I tell you, C.J. Shavers is a great running back. He never goes down the first time. Big Boone had him stood up at the line of scrimmage, but he bounces off and falls forward. Well, 54 and counting to play. OBU trying to hold on to beat Southeastern. Savage Storm having the Bison 28-yard line. Third down and five. Hatley throws out right, and the ball is incomplete. And he was getting just a little pressure up the middle from Papula. Not enough to endanger him, but maybe make him a little uncomfortable. And there, the, for the throw came up short in the right flat. Yeah, Peter Papula's been getting close the whole time. But I tell you what, this is a big, stout offensive line by the Savage Storm. And I tell you, what, we just need one big sack for it. the Bison. They're going Looks for the like field goal. Tyler Fenwick, the second-year head coach, in his third year down in Durant, is going to bring the field goal kicker Trey Knotts on. This is going to be a lengthy try, but with that gale wind behind him, they'll put it down at the 36, so it's a 46-yard attempt. It would be his longest made field goal of the year. From the right hash, snap back, ball down. Keats approach and kick. It's on the way, and it is good. And that has reduced it to a seven-point game with 12.37 to play. Timeout, Oklahoma Baptist 31, Southeastern Oklahoma State 24. Back after these messages on the OBU Football Radio Network. I'm Noble McIntyre. And I'm Jordan Klinger of McIntyre Law. The devastation of losing a loved one is impossible to measure. When it happens because of someone else's negligence, the grief can be overwhelming. Wrongful death cases are unique. Whether the cause was an automobile, semi, motorcycle, medical malpractice, or job-related accident, we can help. If you want to know more about your family's rights, call us. The consultation is free. We love what we do, and we're good at it. We are trial lawyers. Call McIntyre Law today. an advantage to a single possession at 31-24. There's the win game for you. There's no way Southeastern attempts that field goal going the other way 46 yards into the win, and it wouldn't have been good 
going that way. So those three points right there, Southeastern advantage with the win the last quarter. Alley to kick it away. They hold it on the tee at the 35. It's a knuckleball kick, and it should be returned. Takes a bounce from the five. Harris has it. Coming right to the 10, trying to get to the corner, and he cannot as he's out of bounds near the 17-yard line. And it proved to not be a good decision by Key. Maybe you just wave your hand and start at the 25, but who knows because that was a kick that was dangerous indeed. And I learned this. You know, I didn't know this. That you could have fair caught that, yes. even though the ball had bounced. You can call a fair catch on a kickoff if the ball bounces before you. Well, what Harris was doing, he was assuming the ball was going to be kicked out of the end zone, wasn't ready for a little short kick. That was a lost opportunity of a long return possibility. All right, long field now for OBU, leading by seven early in the fourth quarter. They start at their own 17-yard line. They hand it to Tyler Stever running right. Ran into one defender, rolled down at the 19-yard line. The first defender that got there was Baldwin. He got free of Baldwin, but then was swarmed under, I believe, by the league call. Is they're going to give him a couple to the 19. It's going to bring up second down. That might be only the second time the Steelers have been able to get to the line of scrimmage and have someplace else to run before he was wrapped up, but they the pursuit was too much. Stever has gone over 2,000, or is threatening 2,000 yards tonight. Hare throws out left for Harris, and the ball is caught. What a great throw and great consultation by Keylon Harris because he had Jeremiah Balls with the quarter darting right in front of him, bothering his line of vision, but the catch goes to the 28-yard line. Tell you, that's a dangerous throw all the way across the field side. With ball trip had a bead on that, and that was hanging up in the wind. Harris had another monster game tonight. They'll empty the backfield. Tyler Stever, the junior from Washington, motions to the near side. Harris throws left. The ball sails high. It is off of Keelon Harris. Fingertips out of bounds. I said he was approaching 2,000 yards. He now has 10 carries for 16. He's five yards away from joining Isaiah Mallory for the only two running backs in Bison football history to amass 2,000 or more career rushing yards. Southeastern in a 4-2 defense, four down linemen, two backers. Second and 10, Oklahoma Baptist at the 28. It is Stever this time. Tyler, 35, there's 2,000, 40, 50, 40, 35, and Tyler was tackled inside the 35-yard line. They finally got him going, and he goes over 2,000 yards in his career. It could not happen to a better young man. Outstanding job by Steven running to the left side. They have four down linemen and two backers right there in the middle. I guess the backers got caught up just a little bit, and as soon as Steven got by that, it was open green turf. 41 yards for Tyler Stever. So we've had Preston Hare throw for 100 yards, <laughs> yeah. uh, 100 Touchdown passes in a career tonight, and now Tyler going over 2,000 rushing yards. More importantly, it's a first down into Southeastern's into the field of the 31-yard line. They hand it again to the short side. Stever trying to get going, and he manages to dive down near the 27-yard line, a gain of four. And that offensive front right now, Juan Dog, really starting to control things against that four-man front for Southeastern. Yeah, Jake Foshi, the left tackle. Uh, Caleb Butler, the left guard on that play. They even brought Zach Frazier, the right guard, on a pull to help lead the way for Stever. 10-15 to play in the ball game. Clock is rolling. Oklahoma Baptist 31, Southeastern 24, and Shawnee Bison trying to win 15 straight against in-state opponents. Harris motions to the near side. Harris throws left, and it is Cornell with the first down catch. And he tiptoes out of bounds at the 20 again of seven on second down and six. Oh, I love Josh Cornell, and, and Hare was thinking about it. I guess that's the plan, going into the wind, kind of pick it apart, have these little short four or five-yard sure. passes, yeah. kind of serve as a run, but I'm really getting kind of nervous some of those passes into the wind toward the sideline. Clock begins to roll under 10 minutes to play of the ball game. Sam Sharp tied in motions and lines up right side. Stever gets a block. Hare throws a little timing pattern for Cornell, who makes a leaping catch. Was he in bounds? No, he was not. They say that he was pushed out of bounds. And it was Jeremiah Baltrip that saved what would have been a terrific reception by Josh Cornell. And a great pass by Preston Hare. Hare and Cornell are so in tune with each other on those back shoulder throws that I thought that was a mammoth play right there, but we can't tell from way on the other side. Lights of football brought to you by SSM Health, St. Anthony Hospital, Shawnee. They have a game plan to keep you healthy. Visit SSMHealth.com. Second and ten. Preston rolling right, gets a block from Stever, throws for the end zone, and it's incomplete. 
Michael Marshall was the intended receiver. The ball was just a little offline. Marshall did have some separation, though, that time against the defensive back, DJ, or, uh, I think that was Baldwin in coverage. And Keon, yeah. it's, it, it's interesting. He went to Marshall in the end zone. He actually had Keelan at about the five if he'd elected to go to the short guy. Third down and ten. More than likely two down territory for Oklahoma Baptist going into the win with 9.34 to play in the contest. Steve a pistol formation. Now Preston checks out of the play as they signal it in from next door. And the play caller, Daniel Eaton, in his first season of doing that here at Oklahoma Baptist. Three receivers right delay again. And now a delay of game. Gee, but hey, how does that happen? Well, you check out the play and look for a long time. There's only five seconds left on the play clock. Well, that's a killer because now you're outside the red zone. It's third down and 15. OBU through three quarters, six of nine on third down conversions. And that's what they are for the contest. Southeastern is four of eight. And if you elect to kick a field goal from here, it's a 42-yarder. It would have been a 35. Or now is split wide left, short left, along with Keelan Harris. Three receivers to the near side. Empty backfield for the 33 of Southeastern. Hare tucks it, running right, dumps it off. Harris makes the catch, 15 to the 10. Keelan to the 5. Lead cover defender, and is he in for the touchdown? Yes, he is. Touchdown, Oklahoma Baptist. Holy Toledo, Keelan Harris leaped over a defender at the one-yard line. And OBU has taken a two-touchdown lead in a historic Division II track stadium. Track star, Earl. Mr. Hillis, thank you. Unbelievable reception and run. Outstanding play call. That's the same play against Harding on the first play. Preston Hare had an option to run throw, so he runs right. The backers come up. Harris out of the slot, gets out to the outside, hits him. Here's Garcia's extra point. It's a knuckleball and an ugly one as he pulls it left. So that is huge in a two-score game with 9.24 to play. And all of a sudden, the advantage is 13 at 37 to 24. We'll step aside for these messages from Noble McIntyre of State Farm Insurance on the OBU Football Radio Network. Estate planning is a crucial step in protecting your family's future. With an estate plan, you can decide how to distribute your assets, make health care decisions, and support ministries after you pass away. It involves some pretty big decisions, but with guidance from Water's Edge, you can plan for your children's future, give to kingdom causes, and get expert help along the way. Build a solid foundation for your family. Start your estate plan today. Visit watersedgeservices.org. and they only went to third down once and that was third and 15 at the southeastern 25 Hare to Harris and it was Keelan near the goal line working his magic leaping over the defender and getting inside the pylon bread and butter play that run pass option Hare going down the line and then as soon as the linebackers come up dump the ball off to Harris Garcia kicks it off it'll be returned near side at the 18 to the 25 he Double. lost the ball but he was down and good kick coverage that time for Oklahoma Baptist. That was Matt Norman again with a great tackle. It was Matt Norman, the same guy that recovered that uh, pooch kick that wasn't on purpose. Pooch. Sky Lowe was the one that returned the kickoff. <laughs> hey, can I go back now and try to say what I tried to say and said so poorly? In this historic track stadium, Division II level, did Keelan Harris look like he should not be on the track team in the spring and running hurdles after that? There's no doubt. He's that got he the speed. and yeah. First and 10 at the 25-yard line. Hatley down 13 points. Approaching the midway point of the fourth quarter. Now will operate again with the wind of his back. He has three receivers flanked right of the formation. A single receiver to the near side. Here comes the pressure from Boone on the near side. They throw it away. The catch is made by Blakely, and he's up. Truck down. 
Jay Jordan came up from the quarterback spot and drops him for a loss of about two. So what Brandon Morris always stresses, we need some guys to step up, make, and finish plays. Jay Jordan with good blocking by Southeastern Front. He gets behind the blocker and takes the legs out of the receiver. 8.55 and counting to play. Oklahoma Baptist, 37, Southeastern, 24. Southeastern came in allowing just 21 points a game, defensively third best in the league. A loss of a yard and a half and a great play by Jay Jordan at quarter. Second and long back near the 23. Hatley throws out right again. The, pe- the catch is made on a high throw by Deuce Pittman, but he has to tiptoe out of bounds at the 32. It's a gain of almost nine, setting up a key third and short. That throw was high because Nick Boone came around the corner, the right side of the offense, right in the face of the QB. Third down and three. Southeastern Oklahoma State with 8.15 to play in the ball game. Bison leading 37 to 24 on homecoming at Crane Family Stadium in the Hurt Athletic Complex. Line of scrimmage at the Savage Storm 32 yard line. Play clock down at a 10. Hatley gets the snap, retreats, throws over the middle. Wide open is Marquise Gray for a first down. And Gray then is punished as he goes across the 45 and gets to the 48-yard line. So a key conversion on third and short by Southeastern. Felipe Alviar is helping the cornerback safety help over the top. But when Tyler Steve, not Tyler Steeler, but the, uh, the wide receiver for Southeastern goes in, on the short out, he's got to come up and get that receiver. Big gain as they convert for 20 yards on third and short. First down into OBU territory. Hatley to throw under pressure. Now running away. He's hit and sacked. He was hit blindsided and dropped for a huge loss. Xavier Watt was the one that came and cleaned his clock. And man, I'll tell you what. A, Hatley is fortunate he isn't hurt, and B, Southeaster is really lucky he didn't cop the football up. Uh, without question, I thought he was going to. I thought for sure he was going to uh, pop it up. Hey, how's that for a freshman uh, memory? And Xavier a lot. We haven't called his name a lot. Boy, what a time to call it, right? Z- and he, he outran Hatley, and Hatley did fumble the ball. <laughs> Hatley actually reached down and pulled it back to himself. A loss of 15 back to the Southeastern 37. Hatley retreats, dumps it over the middle. The ball is incomplete. Flag on the play for the defensive secondary. They're going to, yeah. I think they're going to get Nick Boone for a late hit against Dalton Hatley. Now that is a terrible, terrible penalty against the LBU defense because you had him what would have been third down and 25. Uh, well, I, I, listen, I know this probably sounds very homerish, but I actually did not think that that was excessive on the hit. It wasn't, but the ball was thrown in complete, yeah, right. maybe two steps, boom. Yeah. He could have hit him, but when he wrapped him up and took him to the turf, that's when the flag came out. Well, and he got hurt on the play. There's a trainer's out there. I, it, it appeared that maybe he hurt his arm on the play. Two flags holding to the secondary against LBU. The climb, roughly the passer against LBU. That will be accepted. The first down at a 15-yard penalty. Incidentally, that sack by Xavier Lott a moment ago was the first of his career. And the first sack of the night for the Bison. They're getting good pressure. They're, they're forcing their second sack. They're forcing a lot of pressure on Hatley where Hatley's having to get rid of the football. So now the line of scrimmage is at the 48-yard line of Oklahoma Baptist. Bison came in second in the league with 19 sacks. Southeastern sixth in the conference, having allowed 12 sacks for the season. They just gave up their 13th, but it's nullified because of a roughing the passer foul. In the end, I think it was a good call, but Hatley did a pretty good job of uh, hitting the ground and looking at the referee there before the flight came. Under the midway point of the fourth quarter, OBU by 13. Hatley is going to throw again for the 45. He's running out of time. He tucks it, and he's hit again and sacked back at midfield. Torreon Smith on a jailbreak came up the middle one dog and was able to tackle it. What happened was Robert Lolafia on the right side of the defense forced Hatley right up in to Torreon Smith, and Torreon Smith gets credit for the sack. Lock reads 6.23 to play in the ball game. Oklahoma Baptist leads by 13. They've got Southeastern bottled up again. Second and long. Hatley a deep drop to his own 41. Throws over the middle receiver is open. It's Pittman for a first down. He made the catch at the 42 yard short and turned up field as he gets to the 41 and a half yard line. I tell you the same. The referee doesn't throw a flag when Malik 
Allen has his jersey held because Hatley was going down for the sack. That just allowed him to complete that first down pass. 13 yards on second and 12 to the 37 of OBU. 545 to play of the ball game. After it running back as Wheeler to throw Hatley has all day long. All day long. Now he finally has to dump it over the middle incomplete. Hey, let's give a, a bunch of kudos to the defense right there in the secondary. There was no place for him to go. He had all day long, but he had no place to throw it. Great point, Brooksy. When you consider the circumstances, needing this win, that might have been one of the best jobs in the secondary we've seen this year because I, that's one of the longest times we've seen an opponent have to survey the field in any game this season. I think it was the longest. Yeah, they just had to be a holding play. I, I can't remember a holding play on Southeastern yet, and they've been passing all night. Well, if you believe, and I mean this both ways, that there's not a penalty on every play in football, yeah, I've got some true. ocean front property in Arizona <laughs> to sell you. Hatley to throw for the Bison, 45. Oh, oh, middle, a great catch that time by Kincaid. He picked it off of his shoestrings. It's inside the 10, and Kincaid is down to the five-yard line of OBU. Well, that was a nice catch by Braxton Kincaid because there's a poor pass by Hadley low and behind him. Below his knee, Kincaid comes back and catches it, contorted body, and would have had a touchdown, just a decent pass. First and goal to go, Southeastern. Savage Storm, like OBU, very, very good of the red zone tonight. Wheeler, who has a rushing touchdown, is offset to the left of Dalton Hatley. With 5.04 to play in the ball game, and the clock is rolling. They hand it to Wheeler straight ahead, draws contact at the two, and ran over Felipe Alviar, and he's in for the touchdown. Yeah, Wheeler is a load, 5'10", 210 pounds, just a redshirt freshman from Winona, Texas. But exactly, Todd, he ran over Felipe Alviar, came up about the yard, one and a half yard line. How good is this guy going to be? He is a freshman, two touchdowns tonight, and he now has 10 for the season. Big extra point here by Trey Keats to pull it to a six-point deficit for the Savage Storm. And the kick is on the way, and it is no good. He missed it wide left. <laughs> With the wind to your back, that's such a poor kick. It wasn't much higher than the crossbar way left. Southeastern has just gifted Oklahoma Baptist a huge break. Time out of the field, 4.58 to play. Your score, Oklahoma Baptist 37, Southeastern 30. We'll pause for these local messages on the OBU Football Radio Network. Green Noble McIntyre, McIntyre Law. We have over 100 years of combined litigation experience fighting for Oklahomans injured by medical malpractice and medical devices. These injuries are caused by medical products including defective hip implants, hernia mesh and breast implants, and IVC filters, as well as drugs such as Valsartan, Zoralto, and Celgens. If you have been injured and want to learn more about your rights, call us right now. The consultation is free. We love what we do, and we're good at it. We are trial lawyers. Call McIntyre Law today. <laughs> For the wind to his back, it's a touchback, and Oklahoma Baptist will have it. First down and 10 with 4.57 to play. The timeout situation, two timeouts remain for the Bison and three for Southeastern. OBU leads it 37 to 30, and I feel a little bit better, guys, now about that Guillermo Garcia extra point that he's missed. It would make it an eight-point game had he converted, but boy, boy, oh boy, if it's a six-point game, you worry yourself sick late in the ball game. Yeah, here's where the offense needs to help the defense or be a good defense. You can just be defensive by just chewing up the clock, getting some first downs as the offense. First down and 10 for the 25. Preston Hare throws it out in the backfield for Stever. Turns the quarter. Tyler starting to get going offensively. Manages to get to the 30, so a good gain of five on first down. And stays in bounds. Great job by Stever as that clock winds down to 441. OBU up 37-30 over Southeastern. Preston Hare is coming out of the ball game, so 
OBU must be going with a wildcat look with Tyler Stever, who remains out there. 4.15 to play in the football game at Shawnee. OBU trying to win their 15th straight game over an Oklahoma team. That streak does include the 34-31 win at Paul Laird Field down at Durant back in 2019. It is a wildcat formation, two tight ends. They fake the handoff to Sharp. Now Stever is going to keep it, and he is pushed back. They give him forward progress to the 30, and that time the Wildcat did nothing. So it's third and short. It was really slow developing, a fake handoff to Seth Berry in motion, and uh, nowhere to go for Stever. It's a one possession game. Southeastern can afford to save those timeouts. They have three in their pocket. 347 and counting to play in the ball game. Bison 37, Savage Storm 30. OBU already has won the Great American Conference Women's Cross Country Championship in Searcy today. The men finish second. Volleyball, or excuse me, soccer won at Washita 2-0. Hare to throw. Rolls right from his own 22. Throws near side. Incomplete. There was contact, and here comes the flag. They're going to call Kaleem Baldwin, I believe, for the foul. Well, boys, let's just put it this way. If this stays, if it's first down, the offense now, rather than the... It wasn't the call against Baldwin for the hit. It was he was holding the jersey of Josh Cordell, so a first down for the Bison. All he's going to say was that now this puts the control of the game back in the offense's hand and not in the defense because the defense is going to have to win the game at the end uh, if that call is not made. Now the offense has a chance to win the game. And the offense would be good to have the best quarterback in the league on the, on the field on second and five. 325 to play in the ball game. Press it down at the 40. Delayed handoff to Stever, running left, Tyler, 45-50, first down to Southeastern's 44-yard line. And how lovely, how beneficial is it to have number seven in the backfield when defenses of the late stages of the ball game start to wear down. And Stever, he's covering the football with both arms, protecting the football, so that kind of takes away a little bit of your speed, pumping your arms, and he just keeps those legs driving and driving, carrying three, four tacklers. 16 more for Tyler Stever, who has had a big second half. He now has 15 carries for 82 yards, a long run of 41 and a touchdown, and he has become only the second bison in program history to eclipse 2,000 yards rushing. First down at the southeastern 44-yard line. Sam Sharp motions, lines up tight in left. They hand it off to Stever straight ahead. He almost broke it again. He gets to the 40 of Southeastern. I'm headed down, but the last thing I'm going to say is suddenly this, not suddenly, but this offensive line has finally been able to get a bit, a bit of push off late in the game and get some holes for uh, Stever to run. I didn't, you know, Stever, he kind of sidestepped there. Southeastern was jamming the F at the line of scrimmage. He just found a tiny, tiny hole and just powered forward. Time out of the field, 2.33 to play in the ball game. Oklahoma Baptist leading 37 to 30. Southeastern has gifted the Bison 14 points on turnovers today. They also have missed a couple of extra points. OBU has played clean football in terms of turnovers. They have missed one extra point that gives them three misses. The last two games, two by Leo Schultz last week in Aiden and one here tonight by Guillermo Garcia. Bison football brought to you by Noble McIntyre. McIntyre Law, shop OBUBison.com and SSM Health, St. Anthony Hospital, Shawnee. The big guys, Monger, Frazier, Roberts, Butler, Foshi, give them a big pat on the back. They have really performed well when this game has been to the line. Pass and run block. 2.33 to play. Second down in six at the Southeastern 40. They sweep right with Stever, and he has taken down for a loss. Had his feet taken out from underneath him by Malumba. Well, that was a good play. Malumba was just kind of spying out here on the left corner of the defense and came blitzing on a run blitz. He loses to the 44, so he loses the previous four gained. It's now third down and 10. Southeastern has two more timeouts. OBU has two as well, but the Bison leading by seven with under two minutes to play in the ball game. Certainly do not want to stop the clock. Boy, a first down might cement it here for the Bison. I wonder if 
Hare's going to do that run pass option. Seth Berry is tied in right. Wide receiver split both ways. They hand it again to Stever. Tyler behind left guard and left tackle. Butler and Foshi gets very little. He'll get to the 44. Timeout Southeastern. They will have one remaining with 1.41 to play. We'll take our final second half break. It's a local break on the Bison Radio Network. Estate planning is a crucial step in protecting your family's future. With an estate plan, you can decide how to distribute your assets, make healthcare decisions, and support ministries after you pass away. It involves some pretty big decisions, but with guidance from Water's Edge, you can plan for your children's future, give to kingdom causes, and get expert help along the way. Build a solid foundation for your family. Start your estate plan today. Visit watersedgeservices.org. Andy Punt hits at the five, turns over and over, you downed it. Inside the one, great play on special teams by Oklahoma Baptist. Still trying to catch the number of the OBU player on special teams. It was Thomas Meadow, and he tapped it down inside the one yard line. What a play by Meadow, that ball. The kick returner was hoping it went back in the end zone. It bounced up toward the pylon about the two. Thomas Meadow does not give up on that football. It might go in the end zone. He catches it and runs out of bounds at the one yard line. The best 43 yard punt of Ethan McCasson's career to date. Southeastern, 132 away from the tied score and 99 yards with only one timeout. The Bison faithful here on the west side of the stadium coming to their feet. Hatley about eight yards deep into the end zone for the Savage Storm, awaiting the snap back from Caleb Weatherford. He gets it with one. Hatley drops almost to the goal line, guns over the middle, nobody home, it's incomplete. Second down and 10. Upcoming, there was some pressure one dog that time up the middle. Robert Lolafee up the middle along with Nick Boone, and Hatley does not like the pressure because that wide receiver is wide open, man-to-man -man right there on the right side of the field. 129 to play of the ball game. Second down and 10 at the one-yard line in their own end of the field for Southeastern. Dalton Hatley, the junior signal caller from Clovis, New Mexico, working at the south end in the shadow of his own goal post. Hatley will drop nine yards deep, dancing, dancing, gets it out left, and the ball is caught on a diving reception at the 10-yard line. The trail Blakely was able to get his hands underneath and keep the ball from hitting the turf. It's a nine-yard gain going to bring up second down, and now they do give him the first down at the 12-yard line. Now it looked like Lola Fia hit the arm or tipped that pass. Second and 12, Hatley to throw, throws it out left, near side catch, and out of bounds is Marquise Gray, right in front of Tyler King. He can't continue to run him the boundary, Scott. Those are all three timeouts, one and two to play. But you got to give it up to Hatley. That was a beautiful behind the shoulder catch. Tyler King had it back to the quarterback, so only the receiver knows where the football is. 11-yard catch for Gray, the sophomore from Tyler, who came in with 20 receptions. First down, Savage Storm at their own 23. Win to their back with 102 to play in the ball game. They have one timeout. Hatley will throw it out right. Receiver is wide open again. The 26 turns up field, stretches to the 33. Again, it's Blakely, and he will stop the clock again for the move of the chains. Will Coleman with the tackle in the open field almost prevented the first down. Receiver falls over the line. First of 10 at the 33. Another throw out left. Wide open again is Blakely, and he tiptoes his way out of bounds for a reception of eight to the 41. And what's so dangerous about this, Southeastern has a win, so Hatley doesn't need to have the super arm to, to have this fake uh, pump on the short pass and going deep. 40 seconds 
on this drive. Southeasters move for their own one upfield to the Savage Storm 41. They still have one timeout down 37 to 30. Bison trying to get a stop defensively. Hatley gets the snap back from Weatherford. Gets a block from his running back. Pump fakes. Throws over the middle. The ball is caught at the 49. And on the reception that time was Jared. No, it was not Bell, but it was Hawthorne. Excuse me. And he's tackled to the Bison 46-yard line. Great pass by Hatley because Nick Boone buried him into the natural grass here in OBU. 23, 22, 21 seconds to play. Back to throw, Hatley throws it out left, diving attempt, and he made the catch inbounds at the 40 yard line. That's huge because the clock continues to roll. 10 seconds, nine seconds to play. They spot it down at the 38 of OBU. So it's gonna be second down and short as they finally get the Timeout called, and now Southeastern will be down to a final play or two with the wind to their back. You guys hear me? Marquise Gray made that uh, catch. It would have been better if he would just left that be incomplete, staying in bounds uh, with Oklahoma Baptist. It's a good play. Hey, OBU fans, look at the less than five minutes from OBU. Hampton and Shawnee offers free breakfast and exclusive OBU visitors discounts. Call and reserve your room today for 15% off your next day. The line of scrimmage is at the 39 yard line. It is second down and three. OBU is going to put everybody deep. You have to prevent against a Hail Mary pass. The defense already back out of the field. Southeastern still huddled up. Savage Storm, the Boker final timeout. Crowd coming alive here at homecoming. Soccer has won at Wachita. Men finished second. Women won the Great American Conference Cross Country Championship over in Searcy, Arkansas. And football trying to finish off a homecoming victory with their 15th straight against the Oklahoma score. Bison is getting, been getting good pressure. Looks like they're going to go with a four-man rush. Uh, looks like seven guys in the back. Drop the backers maybe 10 yards back. And the D-backs 15 or more. Nine seconds to play. I'm going to have to get some heart medicine. I mean, this is the first of three in a row in a Difficult stretch for OBU next week in Magnolia at Southern Arkansas. Two weeks, the home finale here against Henderson State before the finale at Bethany against Southern Nazarene. All right, three-man, three-man rush. Tell you, pressure is going to be really important here. That makes Hatley get off balance with the throw. Here we go, nine seconds to play. Hatley gets the snap, drops to the 48, throws out right. Receivers open the 21. He's dump truck down on a good tackle. Kentrell Blakely at the 14-yard line of OBU with two seconds to play. He did get out of bounds, so Hatley's going to have a chance from the 14 of OBU to get this game perhaps an extra point away from being tied. That was a good hard tackle by Filippi Alviar, but that's a big chunk to make this a possibility for a 14-yard touchdown pass. This game, these two have battled for 59 minutes and 58 seconds. It's come down to one defensive stop right here. First and 10 of the 14, timeout Oklahoma Baptist, making sure they have all their ducks in the order. And the Bison will have one timeout remaining as they try to hold off Southeastern on a drive that again started back at the Savage Storm nine-yard line. Historic night here at Crane Family Stadium at the Hurt Athletic Complex. Preston Hare has three touchdown passes. He joins Rogers and Ritter from Henderson State in Southern Arkansas. Is the only three in league history to have 100 or more touchdown passes in a career. And Tyler Stever with a nice game rushing. Average at 11.3 yards per carry or on a reception. Average in almost five a game or a carry on the ground has 83 and a touchdown to go over 2,000 yards. Tyler came into the ball game needing 21 for 2,000 and he still is well behind the school record total of 2,476 of Isaiah Mallory but he has the rest of this year and next year. So here is the game. Barring a defensive penalty. First down and 10 Southeastern in the Oklahoma Baptist red zone at the 14 yard line. Two seconds to play. Weatherford will snap it. Hatley out of the gun. 
has receivers left and right. He drops all the way to the 24, throws towards the end zone. It's too high and complete. Oklahoma Baptist win. Penalty. There is a flag on the play, so let's hold everything. OBU had started to celebrate, and Scott is saying in the headphones that it looks like it's a penalty against the bicep. Pass interference, the preliminary indication against OBU, so the game will have one more play. And that throw was way high. Maybe if Bison hit him early, but you know, they always talk about the uncatchable, but maybe if you didn't push him, it wouldn't be. But this is going to be inside the five-yard line at the three. Oh, my goodness. The celebration had started. They had already thrown the water cups up. They started to storm the field. And now Brandon Morris's defense is going to have to defend one more play. And you got to think about the run. If you have Wheeler in there, you could – do a little draw play. He is speed and power, so got to bring a bunch of beef up because towards the Because of line. the defensive foul, we have one untimed down. Officially no time of the clock. Oklahoma Baptist 37, East, uh, Southeastern 30. Hatley and company with Wheeler in the backfield from the three. And another timeout, and OBU is going to burn their final timeout. I tell you, Hatley's been very inaccurate with a lot of passes. I'm thinking the ball is either going to be handed off to Wheeler or thrown to him in the flat. Scott, I'm going to tell you, and it's easy to set up here in second guess, but I do not like the fact they had 92 seconds to play, and they used 92 seconds essentially to go 96 yards. You've got to yeah. be more aggressive yep. and not allow open receivers all over the field and let them work the boundaries to preserve time. You're right, and that's on the cornerbacks and the linebackers because Will Coleman and Felipe Alviar were the two safeties for over-the-top help in case somebody got burned, and that, that's correct to have those two safeties. But everybody else, you got nine more players, pressure on the quarterback, and like you said, a little bit tighter coverage up on the shorter routes. Hey, both teams are out of timeouts. The game comes down to this untimed down. Southeastern has gone 96 of a needed 99 yards. They did it in the final 132. A flag pass interference against OBU kept the drive alive for one untimed down. Ball is on the right hash. Dalton Hatley, the quarterback. To the right is Wheeler. They motion a man from left to right. That's Marquise Gray. The snap comes back. Rolling right. Hatley has time for the 10. By time. Back pedaling the 15. Throws to the end zone. It is caught for the touchdown. Wheeler. Wheeler caught the touchdown. I don't know how he did it. He did it in traffic, Scott. Yep, there's in between. There's three bison on the back line and pumping, pumping right before uh, Hatley's going to get hit. Wheeler just throws it up on the back side, and that's who you want. That's who I thought was getting the football. But, you know, Southeastern's missed two extra points tonight, so this I heard almost go for two here. Let's see what they got. Trey Keeps, who missed the big one the last time to make it a seven-point lead to tie it and force overtime. Snap back, ball down, kick is on the way, and Keats is good. He didn't get it by much, but got it by enough, and we're tied at 37 as we will keep it here and await for the start of overtime. 99 yards for Southeastern, 132 to play, and then they get another untimed down and somehow, Hatley, who was rolling right, he was backpedaling, 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 found DeAndre Wheeler in traffic, and Wheeler pulled it down, and the extra point was good. That is heartbreaking. That is heartbreaking, and like you said, you have to be more aggressive on defense, and you talked about the extra point that Oklahoma Baptist missed earlier is going to cost you, and it definitely did because... You could go away with a 38-37 victory here or at least force the Savage Storm to go for two there. I just did not have a good feeling, to be honest with you, Scott, when they continue to work the boundaries. Well, they only had two timeouts when they started back at their one-yard line. And every time the receiver was able to get out of bounds, that was essentially a free timeout for Southeastern. And a lot of those passes are, like, short through the gap, so... A lot of the linemen never get their hands up and, and block the passes. We hadn't seen any deflected passes here tonight. Wheeler has four touchdowns. He has three rushing of two, eight, and five yards, and he has the two-yard touchdown pass on an untimed down. 
to tie the game with the extra point from Keats. Preston Hare, Dalton Hatley, the quarterbacks will meet for the coin toss at midfield. I want to bring John in from the sidelines and get his thoughts. Brooksy, don't you think the coverage was entirely too soft? Probably. I mean, I'm down here, and I, I, I saw a couple of plays. The sideline play, I, I thought the play that was probably going to win it was when the catch was made and the player was in bounds and they called timeout with, with 11 seconds to go. I thought that would be the key key thing. Really, there was no, no pressure on Hatley on anything all the way in, but when he rolled to the right, and I'm right here on the sideline, and the ball goes into the air, the bench here goes crazy because they think that the ball has been overthrown or intercepted, and not until the very, very last moment when I hear you say it, does anybody here on the sideline realize that, it, that it's a touchdown. Why should we expect anything different? The last three games dating back to 2017 between OBU and Southeastern, Two wins by the Bison, one by the Savage Storm have been by a combined 13 points. The other two meetings, Southeastern wins in 2015 by 13 and in 2016. The largest spread in this rivalry of five games plus now, 42 to 22. So Dalton Hatley, I was really impressed with him looking at him this week studying the stats coming in and he has certainly not been disappointing the bison have won the toss southeastern will get the football first and they will put it down at the 25 yard line in overtime so both teams are going to go to that north end zone with the win to their back if you stop them here a field goal would win the ball game. And Scott's right. Both teams will play from right to left, south to north with the wind, which is still up over 20 miles an hour to their back. Here we go. First play of overtime. And now OBU spends a timeout. After all of that, you have to burn a timeout in overtime before they even snap the football. In, we're tied at 37. If you walked away, we're hoping to hear the post-game show. OBU was called for pass interference on the final play of the ball game. And then it'll be untimed down from the three. Dalton Hatley by time, rolling right, back pedaling, back it up, back it up. Threw it over the middle and found his receiver, DeAndre Wheeler, for his running back for the touchdown. So we are in overtime. The Bison have won. They have elected to be on defense first. That's the usual play. Because if you get the stop again, all you have to have is a field goal. If I'm right, I think after the first overtime in college football, you have to go for two. So they could kick an extra point if both teams score seven at the end of this overtime. I think both teams have to go for two going forward. Here we go, first and 10 out of the Bison timeout. Jacob Reyes with a touchdown on the board, starts the motion. Hatley throws, rolling right. It is Reyes, turns up field. Reyes is tackled in bounds. It doesn't matter because there's no time on the clock. Will Coleman was the one that stopped him at the 22. It'll be a short gain of three. Good job by Will Coleman running laterally toward that right sideline because Shavers has been shifty tonight and driving and getting those extra yards. Second down at seven, Savage Storm at the 22-yard line of Oklahoma Baptist. 37 apiece, the highest scoring game among the six meetings all time between these two programs. Perini in motion, fake the handoff. They throw over the middle, diving catch and incomplete. Boy, he looked like he had it, but when he hit the ground, it was incomplete. That was Deuce Pittman, and now it's third down and seven. I'm going to stop him here and force him into a three-point attempt. Well, that was a pinpoint pass by Hatley. Uh, Pittman was double teamed right in between the double team, right on the fingertips. It looked like Pittman was pulling it in, but he couldn't take it all the way into the turf. Crowd urging on the Bison defense, who just allowed a 99-yard drive to end regulation by Southeastern. Pablo Perini, the sophomore from Coppell, Texas, is tied in left. He motions to the far side. Receivers two left, one right. Hatley drops to the 30. Throws out left, ball is caught by Perini. A good tackle at the 20-yard line. Felipe Alvear hitting right in his tracks. 
And that is a gain of two. It's fourth down and five. And now you have to draw the field goal unit on if you're Southeastern. Boy, what a tackle by Alviar. He reads that play, bearing down full speed. Perfect wrap up on a big tight end. Already tonight, Keats, who's missed two extra points, has a field goal of 46 yards. This will be from 37 with the window is back. Snap is back. Ball is down. Plenty of leg. Kick is on the way. And it is no good. He missed it wide right. So Keats with the window is back. Misses it wide right. Advantage Oklahoma Baptist as they now will need nothing more than a field goal to beat Southeast in the number 15th straight against in-state competition. How about the defense? Putting the defense out there. Hitting the stop. Good tackling. Will Coleman up there along the right sideline, running laterally. And then Will Col then Felipe Alvia on that last play on third down. All right. OBU had a premature celebration before the pass interference call on the final play of regulation. Can they celebrate for real this time as they will take over at the north end at the 25-yard line? OBU needs but a field goal to win it after Southeastern missed on their first attempt by Trey Keats. They empty the backfield. Preston Hare with four receivers right. Cornell, the lone receiver to the near side. Preston is going to keep it on a quarterback draw. 20, and he drags the defender with him. He's down to the 18, maybe the 17-yard line. Micah Rogers was the one holding on for dear life. Yeah, those quarterback draws will slow down the pass rush of the Savage Storm, and I like that four. Uh, receivers to the right side, as you mentioned. Josh Cornell, man-to-man -man on this side, but now uh, Harris is in the slot with him. Seven yards to the 18 of Southeastern with a keeper by Preston Hare, time out of the field, and that will be charged to Southeastern. <laughs> you get a man-to-man -man over here on Cornell and Harris, your top two Oklahoma Baptist wide receivers, maybe run a cross or some kind of rub and one of them be wide open. Preston Harris thrown for 237 yards against one of the top ranked pass defenses in the conference. In fact, the number two. The 237 yards, the third most against Southeastern's defense this year. The Savage Norman allowed but just one 300 yard passing game. That came against Southwestern's Tanner Griffin. Back in week three, when the Savage Storm beat the Bulldogs, Griffin threw for 301 yards. There's no Tyler Steeler on the field. On that. There's an empty backfield on that quarterback draw by Preston Hare. And I don't see Steeler again. Maybe he can do that again. Maybe a run pass option. And, of course, the same formation. Harris and Cornell here on the left. Marshall Clark and uh, Phipps are wide right. To the near side is Harris and Cordell. Empty backfield on second down and three. Preston Harris going to keep it again. He's hit, but pushed forward and has the first down to the 14-yard line. And if you notice, they're working the middle of the field. They're not working the angles. They want a straight-on attempt here. And you have that. Getting the first down, you still can run the football. You can still pass the football. So Oklahoma Baptist is golden as into opportunities here. Southeastern in a deep hole now. First and 10, Heron Company at the 14 of the Savage Storm. OBU with their first offensive possession in overtime. We're tied at 37. Hare, here comes the rush. He eludes it. Breaking tacklers, running right. Preston to the 10, angry right, and he's out of bounds at the six-yard line. It has been all Preston Hare, one dog on this drive, not with his arms, but with his feet. Yeah, that was with an empty backfield, so he had like a run pass option. There he had to run because of the blitz. He was flushed out of the pocket. I think he was looking like maybe to pass, and they would hesitate if he wanted to do the quarterback draw. Now Tyler Stever coming in. Stever again, a nice second half, has 82 net rushing yards to go over 2,000. He's in a pistol. The tight end is lined up right from the 14. The handoff to Stever. He'll walk in for the touchdown. Mason win. 15 in a row for Oklahoma Baptist. Zach Frazier pulled on that play for the block, and also Sam Sharp, the tight end in the backfield. Of course, Stever kicked it out and just walked home. 
A six-yard touchdown run for Tyler Stever, and in overtime, Oklahoma Baptist beats Southeastern 43 to 37. I want to bring Brooksy in from the field, and John, what a terrific defensive series after heartbreak. A 99-yard drive given up by that same unit at the end of regulation. We can hear the wind in John's mic, but he did not hear him. How can you hear me? I can hear you now. Mighty good. I tell you guys, to come so close to letting you get away and then have the drama right there at the finish, the, the excitement on the sideline has left goosebumps all over me. It was absolutely amazing. There was so much tension, and yet you could just you could feel the second you saw the handoff to Steeler, everybody on the sideline started to run it out on the field. They knew nobody was going to get it. Final score, 43-37, Oklahoma Baptist over Southeastern in overtime. We'll be back to begin the Noble McIntyre McIntyre Law postgame show in a moment on the Bison Radio Network. Huge homecoming crowd, over 3,000 on hand tonight. Witness Oklahoma Baptist extend their in-straight win streak to 15 consecutive over Oklahoma Great American Conference foes. And it did not come without a major scare tonight. If you were not with us for a while, maybe left towards the end of the game, Southeastern started their final drive of the night at the, night at the one yard line. They went nine plays, 99 yards, and officially 132 with an unplay, untimed down. And it was Wheeler catching a two-yard touchdown pass from Hatley. The extra point by Keats, who had a tough night kicking for Southeastern, was good. We were sent to overtime at 37. Southeastern started at the 25. They did it just five yards on their first series. They called on for a field goal attempt. Keats, and he missed it. Wasn't even close. OBU took over. Preston Hare on runs on first, second, first down. Set up first down and goal to go at the sixth. They brought Tyler Stever in for the first time in the overtime drive. And Stever literally walks in around the left side on a huge run for Tyler, his second touchdown of the night. And he now has 30 career touchdowns as an Oklahoma Baptist Bison. 43-37 is the final score. Chris Jensen is addressing the team. We'll take another break. We'll have a scoring recap. We will have a statistical recap. Coach Jensen, Preston Hare, Tyler Stever all join us next to the postgame show. Brought to you by Noble McIntyre, McIntyre Law on the Boston Radio Network.
Complex, a wild one tonight. Oklahoma Baptist beats Southeastern 43 to 37. Chris Jensen tonight picks up career victory number 35, and this is 85th game as head coach on Bison Hill. And speaking of the head man, he's downstairs with Brooksy. It's hard to know where to start with this with all the ups and downs, but I thought maybe I'd start with after you think you've won the game twice in regulation, and then the defensive penalty, and then it looks like it's going to be an interception, and it's a reception, and you have gone, and your team has gone up and down on the roller coaster. You were so animated when you got them together. What did you say? I just, you know, this game is 60 minutes, and, you know, that's what we focus on is the 60 minutes we have. At halftime, I told them we've got 30 more minutes. We've got to make the most of it. We've got to leave it all on the field. Um, but that, that's that's something we always do in overtime. We're going to call them in. And, you know, I, I tell them it's 60 minutes for a lifetime members, but sometimes you get a little bonus. And we got a little bonus tonight. And so we, we practice overtime. Um, we, we're in a position where we know what we're going to do. And, uh, it, you know, the players just finished. It, it was an emotional roller coaster, but I, I got to I have to tell you this. Um, you know, I've been here since 2012, and I've been through a lot of difficult things starting this program, moving to Division II. Uh, and I, I will be honest, I've been on, honest with my coaches, and I've actually told my players this before, that I begged my way out of here many times, but God kept the door closed. And so I, I'm so blessed, I'm so thankful that God kept that door closed and gave me an opportunity to, to experience you know, the blessing of, of winning a game like that against a really good football team, uh, but, but our team was a little bit better tonight, and I'm just so thankful for that opportunity. That's a great answer. That's, that's, a, that's a super answer. Your defense, you know, they have a team go 99 against them in a minute, and then they go into overtime, but they answered when they had to answer. They did. I mean, you know, there's, there's some plays that uh, they made. They're a good football. I'm just telling you, Southeastern's a really good football team. Um, they didn't make a whole lot of mistakes. Um, their quarterback, is, you know, I'm, I'm taking our day, our, our guy, 100% of the time. But if I need, if I had to take another one, I'd choose him because I think he's done a great job this year. Uh, but, you know, they made a bunch of plays. But you know, defensively, it's all about making the stops when you need to make them. We were able to do that. All right. Take us offensively what you're thinking was because you come out, Tyler's not in the backfield. You get the quarterback draw on the very first play and get sizable yardage. But Tyler's still uh, yeah, not there. Was this immediately your thought when you got the ball after the missed field goal try? Oh, yeah. Uh, that's, that's, we wanted to run the rest of the lot more. And, and he, he had a great night doing that. And it's a little change up. Um, I love quarterback run. It's almost like playing with 12 when you're out there. But we get an empty spread out. He's so talented. Elite with the ball in his hand. And, you know, we're going for broke. We, we needed to win this game um, to keep our goals in line. And so, uh, you know, it was. It was 12 all the way. 12 all the way. Here's the play. 12 all the way and let it go, right? Except in the end, 7 went all the way into the end zone. And, you know, I'm down at the other end on the sideline, and the guys are all with tension and everything. But they know they got a shot now. And when that ball was handed off to Tyler, I wish we could have a replay forever, Chris, of the emotion because you could just see it build as he just streaked into the end zone. I was just seeing red right there, and uh, you know, so so proud of Tyler in the game. That he, I mean, he makes a lot of stuff happen on his own, and uh, for him to score that, I mean, I just I'm so proud of our players right now. All right, I'm going to have Tyler and Preston on here in just a moment. Just so you know, uh, Preston becomes only the third player in Great American Conference history to throw 100 touchdown passes or more, and uh, and Tyler goes over 2,000. He went over 2,000 on, on his big run of the night for his career. So nice, nice dance. Huh? Those guys deserve it. I mean, they just, they're so unassuming and they work so hard. Uh, have utmost confidence in themselves. And, you know, they, they couldn't happen with two bad guys. All right, get ready for a road trip. It's going to be mighty, mighty important. Uh, yeah, it is. You know, we, we go play a Southern Arkansas team that um, has been up and down. But, you know, we're, expect, we're going to expect their best shot. Good luck. And congratulations. All right, we're going to track it down wherever they are. Here's... Preston still looking for Tyler. And guys, I've got Preston, so we will go to work with Preston and hope to find and hope to find Tyler. We're looking for Tyler. Well, we're gonna come. All right, Tyler's coming over, guys. Let's get to Preston. 
The question, I, I don't know if they ended up announcing it or not, but you have become only the third player in the history of the Great American Conference to throw for 100 touchdowns or more. Did you know that? I have no idea. You had no idea? No. no. Well, now you do, so what's the first thought in your mind? Uh, I mean, it's a great honor and, and everything, but I just want to celebrate the win because that, that, that took a lot of toll out of my heart, but I'm just happy to come with the win. And, and like I say, every week, week in and week out, it starts with the guys up front. Without them, without the receivers, it's not possible. All right, I just got through visiting with Coach, and I said, okay, you come out there. I, I'm looking. Wait a minute. Where's, where's Tyler? There you are out there in an empty backfield. And I'm thinking, no one's going to go have it. And in the next three questions with Coach, he made it clear that in the beginning of overtime, this was called the 12 offense. Tyler, you're standing here with <laughs> You agreed, it, but I told him that it ended up being the seven offense, right? But, so what were you thinking when you're standing there on the sideline, you see Preston doing a little bit of a show and kind of setting up the hero role for you, didn't you? Yeah, I was excited to see him out there. and It's, it's just awesome to see everybody do their thing and do the things right that they do. And I'm super blessed with this team. Listen, you handed the ball off to this guy a number of times in the first half, fairly deep into the third quarter. And the statistic upstairs, we kept going. I had you one time seven carries for 12 yards. Then after the loss, I had you eight carries for 11. Okay. And then we kept bouncing. And you're, you're hovering because you realize that you went over 2,000 yards in your career now. I did not know that. Okay. Well, there you go. He didn't know that. Yeah. A bunch of surprises. You get surprised. You're throwing over 100 of passes uh, for touchdown, 100 touchdown passes, only one of three guys in you go over 2,000. So we're talking about it in the booth and trying to keep track. And you've been, you know, log jammed all night long. And lo and behold, this is true. I look down to catch it and Todd's down there calling the play. And I'm looking down, catching on something to make sure and trying to make sure what you need. I look up and he's going crazy in the air. And I look up and you break the long one. And the one run that you made, to get the record, I got my head buried in, in, in the paper. But so what was it What was it like when you finally got some room to run and really took off? Yeah, I just felt good because the entire game felt like we're just, it was just hard to run these guys. They're a good defense, and then whenever you put that out, it, it felt amazing. All the time my said. Well, I could ask you all night long how you felt after two attempts in the end zone. They both looked like you had the game one without either one of you having to come back out. But there was a lot of dejection on the sideline, but the defense, let's face it, got the offense back out on the field with a chance to win. I know for you guys, you want to be a team. You probably felt sorry for him, you know, on the 99-yard uh, drive for the touchdown. So what was your thought there before we let you go? I just think that's it, it shows you how much we – I mean, we're not there yet, obviously. We're not at a goal of the championship standard, but that just shows you how far we truly come because in the past I truly think that drives like that happened and then to score touch on how they scored. And, yeah, like you said, everyone in the energy kind of was more out, but then Jensen brought us together and we were like, dude, you know, we work too hard and, and we have too many older guys, experienced guys who have been through this before. And so it's like, you know, to see where I've come, you know, when me and Tyler first came in and Josh Arnold and all these guys – where our, our momentum would have been down and we probably would end up losing the game. We, we turned it around and ended up winning the game in that type of fashion. Our defense worked their butts off, got that final stop, and I knew we were just going to score. So it was just a matter of time before we put Tyler in to finish it off. All right, this is the final deal right here. Are you ready? Why is 19 important? Let's see how smart you guys are. Why is 19 important? That's your question. We're going back upstairs to the guys. These are two guys who apparently have college educations. Why? So is 19, somebody, why is 19 there, important? Because when you add 12 and 7, you get a touchdown to win the game. That's it. That's it upstairs, boys. Brooksy downstairs with two of the heroes of tonight's game, Tyler Stever and Preston Hare. Yet at halftime, Oklahoma Baptist led 17-14. to The final score to the first half of the Andre Wheeler two-yard touchdown run, capping a 12-play 77-yard drive at 6-14. The score to the second half, Southeastern, Managed to pull within 
or actually took the lead at 24-21 uh, with the first score of the second half with 3.24 to go in the third. A 13-play, 80-yard drive in 7 minutes, 38 seconds. Wheeler, who had a huge night tonight, ran in from 8 yards. Keats, extra point, made it again 24-21. Keelan Harris came back, caught a 48-yard touchdown pass at a 12-yard scoring strike from Preston Hare. Keats had a 46-yard field goal at that point. OBU's advantage had gone from 31-21 down to 31-24. Harris hauled in a 25-yard touchdown pass, his third of the night for Preston Hare, who threw for four. The extra point was missed by Garcia. That loomed very, very large at the time. It was a 13-point lead at 37-24. Southeastern had the win in their back in the fourth quarter. They came back with a pair of 10-play 75-yard and 9-play 99-yard drives capped by a 5-yard Wheeler rush and a 2-yard touchdown reception by Wheeler from Hatley. That came on an untimed down after OBU looked like they had stopped Southeastern. The flag was thrown for pass interference, so one untimed down, and Hatley made a terrific play as he bought time, bought time, and then finally found Wheeler in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. The extra point tied it at 37. Each team had a possession. OBU won the coin toss in overtime. As you normally do, they gave the Savage Storm the football. Southeastern netted just five yards and then missed a field goal that would have given them a three-point lead and put a little bit of pressure on the Bison. OBU, though, came back from the 25. They got a seven-yard run by Preston Hare to the 18, a first down carry for Hare to the 14. Then he picked up six or eight yards more and set up first and goal to go at the Savage Storm six. That's where they brought Tyler Stever in and seven turned it into six in an overtime victory tonight, 43-37, before a really good homecoming crowd here tonight in Shawnee. 43-37, the final score in overtime. OBU now has won 15 straight against Oklahoma opponents in Great American Conference play. The Bison have won two straight on the heels of a two-game skid. They're back to two games above 500 at five and three. Southeastern still a game ahead of OBU in the standings at six and two. In overtime tonight, final score, Oklahoma Baptist 43, Southeastern Oklahoma State 37. A statistical look at this one is coming up next as our post-game show brought to you by McIntyre Law continues in a moment on the Bison Radio Network. 